to the gods. You are listening to High Frequency Radio. I'm your host, Yusuf L. What up, what up, what up? Peace. It is Wednesday, January 7, 2015. I am broadcasting live from sunny Southern California. Got another good show lined up for you today. Welcome to another edition of the Natural Law Hour. We get it in. We talk about, well, you know, laws of nature, religion. Talk about a lot of different things. It's called the Natural Law Hour, but you know it lasts longer than an hour. I thought that was kind of like, you know, pretty good, you know. But anyway, I'm going to do a continuation from yesterday. Yesterday we had a good show. We uh, started out the show by asking some people, you know, if you got a uh, question you want to ask, we're going to take two questions and we're going to pick them, you know, we're going to go in on the subject on the questions today on the Natural Law Hour. Yesterday we had some good questions. Peace to the gods. Morocco's what sunflower uh, fire. What's up? What's up? What's up? Airbit. Curtis Edward. Sedan's rules. What's going on? Yvonne Young. B Tundi eight twenty four. Doc three sixty two. Granta seventy seven. The boss one five twenty two two. What's going on? What's going on? Pice, pice, pice. Let me give me some hip hop music going on in the background. Let me play this 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 gangster bitch beat. Y'all don't even remember this old school stuff. Let me play this real quick. Alright. Got me some beats banging in the background. I I I just can't you know, I gotta have me some beats banging in the background. I mean I just does that make me like real hood? You know, I be mean, having like hey, somebody say you're hip hop head. I mean, I got these beats. I gotta have me some beats banging in the back. You know, it's just kind of like that drum just do something to me. You know, I think hip hop is the be- is the best thing that they ever came up with. You know, you say play that that summertime joint. I, I got that joint. Where is it at? I got that. That's some that's summertime. I play it. I play it in a minute. I play it after this. I like that joint too. I chill out. Well, you know what people they might not think. I chill out too. You know, I listen to some uh you know, some uh I listen to everything actually. I, just, I, just, I play a lot of white music. I'm I've been kinda of scared, but I, I got I'm gonna do this thing where I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna play number white music one day. I like a lot of the white artists too. They be having some banging stuff, you know. I be playing their music too. I play everything. Country. I don't play that David McDowell type country music though. David, them is some hardcore country dudes, you know. David McDowell, he hardcore, you know. You know that's that hardcore Christian hardcore country music, you know. I ain't got there yet. <laughs> All right, there yet. <laughs> but anyway, welcome everybody. Hindi, I listen, yeah, I listen to a lot of Hindi stuff, I, especially like, like on the meditation music, you know, uh, uh, some of the, the meditation stuff. I listen to everything. They be banging, you know, over there in India, sure, they be playing hip-hop music. They be rapping in Hindi and all types of stuff. Over in Japan, too. I be like, ching, chong, ching, and it just be banging in the background. I don't even know what they saying. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, right, y'all. This is the Natural Law Hour. Yes, we do have fun. I'm going to let y'all call in today. I'm going to let y'all carry the conversation. I, I, You know, I like to go off with questions. It's a question and answer. You know, you call in. The phone lines are open. 424-222-5250. You call in and ask a question. Let's get this party started. Don't be scared. Ain't nobody scared in Georgia, though. I had to get Georgia. They could probably, Georgia called in a New York man. I ain't scared of you. 440587, you're on high frequency radio. What's up? Hey, Pete Scott. I knew it was you. I knew it was your ass. I knew it was you. <laughs> what you 
Why you talking that shit? Talking that shit. Talking. Sure have. I've been on your YouTube. I've been on your YouTube video. I've been snatching your information. I've been talking on this show so hard. I've been going hard with you, bro. Put a restraining order on your ass. You gotta be 5,000 miles away. I've been going hard with you. I've been going hard with everything you've been sending me. I've been going hard with you. With everything, I boy. I, I really appreciate you. Um, What's going on? I missed what you got? I yesterday. How can I get the, get the show from yesterday? It's in archives. All you got to do is go to, I'll tell you what. If y'all go to high frequency, I'm um, sorry, go to blogtalkradio.com forward slash high frequency and then put dot RSS, high frequency dot RSS. You'll see the download page for all of the shows, you know, all of them, dot RSS. Or you just go to, there, there, you'll see it, you know, go to high frequency radio, I mean, go to blogtalkradio.com forward slash high frequency. Or you can go to our website, go to radiohighfrequency.com. All our shows are on our website, too. RadioHighFrequency.com and go to, go to the website. I, been, and listen to it. I can't. I have an alert coming to my phone it's on my emails, but it's not coming quick enough because I didn't even get the one from yesterday. I just got the one to tune in today. I just got one to tune in today. I don't know if I shot one out. I might not have shot one out yesterday. You know, because I kind of uh, kind of went on the fly. I was I was I was um late getting in yesterday. I had a whole bunch of stuff. You know, happened to me yesterday. Just you know, my day was kind of like unorganized, and uh, okay. I was late getting in, so I might not have sent out the alerts or whatever. But what you got for me today? What you mad? You mad you missed the show yesterday? You want to come in and cuss me out yesterday? I'm giving. I'm, you, I'm letting you do it today. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad because I missed that show yesterday, and I'm calling you because I was trying to find out. Did you know anybody that do any trade lines? I mean. I don't know if I'd say that over the air, you no, know what no, I'm no, saying, trade. Say like, but no, no I, I didn't no. ask you a question. No, I, I don't know nobody do trade lines. But you can you can okay. really, you know, do a trade line. You're talking about for businesses or, for you know, because I don't really deal with the personal credit. I don't deal with personal right. credit. Right, business, business. I do business credit, and you can get your own trade lines. All you got to do on the business credit is, first of all, you're going to get your Don's number. All right. You're going to go and get you a business phone line. Now, you can go and get you a business forwarding phone from AT&T or Sprint or one of the uh, providers, and what you're going to tell them is, that, hey, I want to get a business line, but I want it forwarded to my cell phone. Because the whole I got all game that. is, okay, your telephone number has to be listed in 411. Now, the next That's thing right. is now you've got to go get five trade lines. You're going to get these from businesses like Office Depot, um, now I'm gonna tell you, the the businesses that you go to change all the time. So that's why I gave right. y'all the yeah. website credit creditboards.com in there. Okay. If you go into the business section, they always telling you places to go and apply for credit for your business, right? In there, creditboards.com. That place right there is replete with information on getting business lines of credit. Now, it is some additional things you need to understand, like when you fill out these applications, you know, mm-hmm. you gotta tell them how uh, you know how much money you make. You got to. It's some particular way that you got to fill it out. But all if, and it's different from every for every business. The object of the game is to get five trade lines. So you can get your paydex score of eighty to a hundred. All right, and you're right. going to do that by you know knowing where to. The, the important thing with doing business credit is knowing where to go to apply for business credit and how to fill out the form. And you're going to find that by going to credit boards with an S dot com mm-hmm. and go in there into the business credit section of it and you know that's all they talk about in there all the time right, it's I, ever I, changing it's ever changing you know what i'm saying and everybody in there keep up with all the changes yeah i've i've been doing that i i did that and they gave up some real good information so i have some but i was looking up i was looking for the high dollar um trade well, you know, you're going to have to work up to that. You know what I'm saying? You know, you want the silver bullet and everything. Get your payday score first, baby. Just get you five trade lines. Don't worry about where you're getting it from. <laughs> get your five trade lines. Get your payday score. And then start going for the big boy stuff. And if you want to do that, then why don't you just go and get you a shelf corporation? Get your shelf corporation. The corporation is already, you know, you can buy one 
or you can go down to the right. Secretary of State and just find one. It's already been on the books for two years. You may want to check oh, and wow. see. I would probably buy one because if you buy one, it got all the tax forms and everything. It's already been filed with it. And then, you know, then you can go for your high dollar stuff real fast like that. You're going to come off about five stacks for doing it. Ooh. but. You know, it's a good thing. If you want to go that route, you got to pay to play. You know, it's only two ways. Ain't nothing free. You're going to pay with your time or you're going to pay with your money. That's just how the game right. goes. Right. That's right. That's correct. Um, I had another question, but I lost my train of thought. But I appreciate all the information that you've been giving me. It's been very informative, and I've been... I've been. I started out doing my um, definitions like you, before. You said it. I mean, you kept it reiterating it. And the thing that um, I hate about people is that when you tell them where to go find something at, they want they don't read to it. research. Oh. They no, still they don't read they, it. I, I can tell you the page number, the book. I did a damn video. Now I did have somebody came on my Facebook page. They went down there and looked themselves. But that's what the problem I had when I first got into all of this is it's this old I tell this story all the time, I'm gonna tell it again for all the new people. When I I was in this about two years and I thought I knew every fucking thing. I I'd been in court fighting against the judge, I knew the system was corrupt and everything. And I met an older okay. gentleman that told me that I didn't know anything. And I okay. and I told him, Shut the hell up, you crazy and he directed me to the American jurisprudence books and he started teaching me the difference between public and private. And I looked okay. and and I'm gonna tell you one other thing I read. I read, believe it or not, the book Dianetics by L. Ron Hubbard at the beginning of the book, at the very beginning, it tells you if you read anything and you pass a word and you don't know the meaning of that word, then you lose the meaning of everything that you're reading. If there is any word in any book that you don't know the meaning of and you skip over it, you've lost the meaning of something. So right. I don't skip over any word. I made it a habit of always looking up words. I don't pass words I don't know the meaning of. This is also how you build your vocabulary, too. But if you're going to read that's something, right. especially as it relates to something that's important, you know, you need to read it, and you don't need to pass over any words you don't know the meaning of. Well, most people are too lazy to look yes. up the words. You know, that's all it is. It's just laziness. It's just laziness. That's all it is. Straight right. laziness. Right. Right. Well, I'm going to hold you up. Thank you. I'll call you. Um, <laughs> I'll call you. I'll um, give a shout in. Um, Did you look at the, the video? You saw the video, uh, the use of L in the law library video on YouTube? You saw that? I wa I watched it tw uh, twice. If you hadn't never showed me exactly where they were, because this librarian, I mean, I'm sorry, this person who worked at the courthouse didn't want to help us. I mean, she didn't help now, us. She now you can go in there, you can find them, can't you? You can go in there now and find and them, can't you? Very much so. And the other books, uh, the uh, the blue ones about um, the Constitution, the American. You said it on the YouTube video. United I, I States Code Services that. book. Yes, United States that, Code Services. That was a. That I love that one. I know exactly what to look for now that I'm looking for it. And then, can't you go in there now? You can see, damn, it's everywhere. They ain't hiding shit. <laughs> I was just appalled by you walking in there and just doing it so smooth, and I was just like shocked because nobody. It's it's like you ask for help, people are not going to give you the right information because I those same books that you showed me were the same books that were out, but I didn't know really? exactly what to look for. So yes, this lady no told me all the books. Right, right, right. Thank you. You're welcome, sister. Yeah, and thank you for calling me. Have a good me. one. You too. You Have too. a good one. Bye bye. Bye bye. You too. All right, y'all. Yeah, y'all need to check out the video. I did it in the video. It's on YouTube. It's Yusuf L in the Law Library. I put it on YouTube. Yusuf L in the Law Library. That's the name of it. Where you can go in and walk around. And I'll show y'all where these books are at. 713-1284. You're on high frequency radio. Peace to the God. What's that? Peace to the God, brother. I, I, hey, I'm, I'm the one who called yesterday about, you know, about the different Moors uh, stuff. But now oh, I'm you calling. Oh, it all, hey, I have, I have, yeah, I've seen <laughs> that sparked a lot of stuff. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, I'm all right, brother. But I was calling. All right, I, I had a um a case where I got uh was personal injury case, um, and I was um like you know hit from behind, 
and the and the lawyer told me that it was supposed to go into litigation. But nothing has never came from that. I'm wondering, like, what can I do from uh, to that? Because okay. I had, like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to answer this question. But this is the natural law hour. But I'm going to answer this question, and then I'm going to segue that question into something that has to do with natural law. But the reason All that right. it has not gone into any type of litigation, because your attorney ain't did shit for you. That's just number one. He's not going to do anything. That's for what you. I figured. Right. That's what I figured. Yeah. Now, the next thing is is that you should start some sort of correspondence with the insurance company or whoever it is that is the adverse party. You have to start a letter-writing campaign. You're going to sit to them and say, hey, look, I was injured. I was in an accident on such and such and such a date. Um, the accident was the other person's fault. Um, I'm entitled to be compensated for injuries in the amount of X, Y, and Z. I'm giving you 10 days to respond and let me know something, and if I don't get anything back from you in 10 days, I'm suing your ass. And that's just what it is because it's att- there's our attorney's work, too. If you're not paying them, they're not doing anything, and usually they're going to do very little until they can get enough money out of you before they can move forward. They try to, you know, drain all the money out of you, and, and then they'll file something or file some, you know, it's only like two hundred dollars to file a lawsuit. I mean, it's not expensive to file a lawsuit. The lawsuit is only like two hundred dollars. All right. Yeah, money I mean, in there, it's, go ahead. It's to draft a complaint. If you know how to draft your own complaint, you can do the whole thing. For like, I do all my own stuff. You do everything you need to do under a couple of hundred dollars, you know, and get somebody. Yeah, that's court. what I'm trying to learn too. Because I mean, um, it, it happened like in oh seven, oh eight, or something, and nothing still has happened. And that's what I figured too. I was like, he hadn't done nothing because, I mean, the guy don't call, so I had been calling him, you know, every six months trying to see, you know, and he just like, well, it hadn't went into litigation. Them type of cases can take a long time and everything. So that's what I realized. He, that's why I knew. I feel like he, he was like an impress. They considered it a low impact. But I'm like, hell, I still hear my back still be hurting. Man, he just hung up on you and said, I ain't fucking with him, and went on to something else, probably snorted some cocaine or some shit. Yeah, because well, he got the case. I had, yeah, cause I had another attorney, and the other attorney after two years turned the case over to him. But ain't now one of them done nothing. I had this, I had this, one, I had this one chick. She, um, she had ch- that case had been going for three years, and they were trying to get money from her. They had, by the time she got to me, they had taken all the money, and they were trying to get some more money and said they were going to file a UCC lien against her, and then they sent her a copy of a UCC one. It hadn't even been filed. I mean, it's just like mm-hmm. it is amazing to me how corrupt attorneys can be, and it's all based off the fact that you don't know. When you go to an attorney, you're really saying to the world that you're incompetent. They got us conditioned to think that we're supposed to have attorneys. An attorney, yeah. You know, that's how how it's supposed to be. And just been since I've been listening to you, I've been doing stuff with my credit, everything, man. So I know what you're saying is the truth. That's why I've been paying attention. Because, I mean, I done got stuff, like, stuff deleted off my credit. I was using a company to do that. But since I've been listening to you, I done let them go. Yeah, you do it yourself, (laughs) yeah, because, yeah. I mean, some of the stuff I knew anyway, I knew that you write your letters and everything, and they have a certain amount of time to respond, you know, but then I didn't know about the part where you send the, you know, uh, you know the uh, money order. Yeah, you do yeah. all that, you know, yeah. it's like taking care of a debt. But it's like, yeah, you can do a lot of stuff. I mean, it, it takes time. Once you start getting the principles down, uh, you know, you can learn a lot of different things of how you can do things yourself as opposed to going to an attorney or anything like that. But that's how you're supposed to. You're supposed to be confident enough to handle your own business. Like my mama said, used to tell me, she said, take care of your business for your business take care of you. But with that being said, brother, let me go in. I'm, I'm going to go into the subject now. i got to talk about it. But All right, well, thank me. you. Okay. I'm going to yield the flow to someone else. Thank you very much. You're welcome, brother. You're welcome. All right. Now, let's get into some of this natural law stuff. Now, let's talk about accidents for a minute because the brother was talking about accidents. How do accidents occur? This is very interesting. And, you know, getting into an accident. Is there such thing as an accident? Is there such thing as chance? Is there such thing as luck? No, I'm going to tell you it's not. Not so such thing as luck. Car 
cause and effect governs everything. Let me go to the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. We'll come out of the Emerald Tablets of Thoth today. Let me give you all a uh, link to it. Here it is right here, Emerald Tablets of Thoth, if you all want to follow along. Let's look at this. We have the history of Thoth, the Atlantean, the Halls of Amenti, the Key of Wisdom, the Spaceborn, the Dweller of Unal, the Key of Magic, the Seven Lords, Keys of Mystery, the Key of Freedom of Space, Key of Time. Oh, here you go. The Law of Cause and Effect. I think that's what I want. Tablet 7. The Law of Cause and Effect. Let's read this real quick. Tablet number 7. The Law of... Remember, Cause and Effect is the sixth principle in the Kabbalion, cause and effect, right? Now, Thoth is like the Greek word for saying Tehuti. Well, they say Hermes, and they call him Thoth, but it's Tehuti. They call him Thoth. You know, this is, I have to bring this to everybody's attention. Here's what the Europeans are going to do. You know, they ain't going to never call them out. You know, they don't call them anything but what the black people call them, you know, <laughs> his original name. But it's Tehuti. All this is around Tehuti. But let's look at this cause and effect real quick, uh, as it relates coming out of the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. Oh, did I miss something? Oh, did I miss it? I don't think I said Tablet 7. It's my tablet... What is it? Key of time. I mean, it's the Emerald Tablets of Thoth is real interesting. As above, so below. That's the law of correspondence. As above. Okay, here it is. Law of cause and effect and key to property. I'm sorry. It's, ta- uh, it's uh, Tablet 12. I said 7. I thought it was a V. It's an X. Tablet 12. I'm going to read this to you, and then we're going to go in on it real uh, in a little bit. It's not real long. It's real short. It's just about four or five paragraphs. Let's read this thing about cause and effect. List ye, O oh man, the words of my wisdom. List to the voice of thought the Atlantean. Conquer it by the law of time space. Knowledge have I gained of the future of time. Know I that man in his movement through space-time shall ever be one with the all. And notice that Tehuti always refers to God, as the Christians do, as the all. That's where they get this stuff from. Uh, he always refers to God as the all. He doesn't anthropomorphize God and change him into a man or Jesus and come down walking around with you and shaking your hand or anything like that. He understands that the source of all creation is the all. It goes on, it says, Know ye, O man, that all of the future is an open book to him who can read. In other words, anybody can prophesy. You ain't got to go to the Reverend Reverend Porkchop or prophetess uh, so-and-so and find out something. Everybody has the capability to be an oracle or to, t- or to be able to perceive the future. Let's go on. It says, Know ye, O man, that all of the future is an open book to him who can read, shall bring forth its causes, and all effects grow from that first cause. Know ye, the future is not fixed or stable, but varies as cause brings forth an effect. Look in the cause, and you shall bring into being, and surely thou shalt see that all is effect. Now, right here, what is he saying? That the future is not stable. Everything depends on the decisions that you make in daily life. Your decision, every time you make a decision to go left or right, there's going to be a corresponding cause and effect that's going to create a a certain future for yourself. Remember, it is the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing over and over again, hoping for a different result. That is the law of cause and effect. Every cause brings about a certain and specific corresponding effect. That's how you can tell the future. Like, for instance, I can say I'm going to get rich. If I have me a mentor who's already rich and I do exactly the same thing that he did, then I'm going to get exactly what he get because that's the law of cause and effect. The, law, the universe is structured that way. 
it is important for you to understand that because now you will understand that in the mental world, there's also laws of cause and effect as well as in the spiritual world. On the spiritual, mental, and physical plane, the principle of cause and effect applies. That is why if you learn how to think a certain specific kind of way, you can change your life by just changing your thinking. You have to get around like-minded people, people who have what you want to have, so you can think like they think. If you don't have anything going right in your life, look around you and look at your surroundings. Look at the people you hang around. Do you think like they think? Or are you going to continue to get what they get? If you're going to change your life, you have to change your thinking. Let's keep going. It goes on, it says, So, old man, be sure the effects that you bring forth are ever causes of more perfect effects. Know ye the future is never in fixation, but follows man's free will as it moves through the movements of time space toward the goal where a new time begins. Man can only read the future through the causes that bring the effects. Seek ye within the causation, and surely you shall find the effects. List ye, O man, while I speak of the future. Speak of the effect that follows the cause. Know ye that man in his journey lightward is ever seeking escape from the night that surrounds him, like the shadows that surround the stars in the sky, like the stars in the sky's face, he too shall shine from the shadows of night. Ever his destiny shall lead him onward until he is one with the light. Hey, though his way lies midst the shadows, ever before him glows the great light. Dark though the way be, yet shall be conquered the shadows that flow around him like night. Now, you'll find that also in the Psalms. Although I walk through the valley of darkness, I know you're with me. Remember that in Psalms, Psalms 23? Ever his destiny shall lead him onward until he is one with the light. A, though his way lies amidst the shadows, ever before him glows the great light. Dark though the way yet be, yet shall he conquer the shadows that flow around him like night. Far in the future I see man as light born, free from the darkness that fetters the soul, living in light without the bounds of the darkness to cover the light that is light of their soul. Know ye, O man, before you attain this, that many the dark shadows shall fall on your light, striving to quench with the shadows of darkness the light of the soul that strives to be free. Great is the struggle between light and darkness, age old and yet ever new. Yet know, and in a time, far in the future, light shall be all and darkness shall fall. List ye, O man, to my words of wisdom. Prepare, and you shall not bind your light. Man has risen and man has fallen as ever new ways of consciousness flow from the great abyss below us toward the sun of their goal. Notice they say sun with an S-U-N. Ye, my children, have risen from a state that was little above the beast, until now of all men ye are greatest. Now, listen what he says right here, that you've risen to a state a little above the beast. I used to tell y'all that there are seven levels to a man. You have, at the bottom level, you have a beast, and then you have, at the next level, you have mankind, which is a kind of man, and then you have a man, and then you have a hue man, and then you have a human being, and then you have a being, and then you have a God. And all of those basically identifies the seven levels of your ascension toward from a beast man to a God. And that is predicated off of your ability to control yourself. Because a God is anything or anyone who is in control. So the other day, somebody told me that some Christians was listening to me. They always say this. They always say, you ain't no God. And they always say this to me, and it never ceases to amaze me why the Christians would say that to me. Because then I say, okay, well, what is Psalms 82, 6 talking about? Is What is John 10, 34 is talking about? They, all, they hate those chapters. Let me read them for you. John 10, 34, 
Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law, I say, you're God? Well, that can't be talking about Psalms because Psalms is not the law. So, you, But you do have a place in the law book of the Torah where someone is mentioned like a God. And you'll find that in Exodus 7.1. Remember Exodus 7.1? Let me read this to you. Exodus 7, 1. The Lord said to Moses, See, I made you like God to Pharaoh, or a God to Pharaoh. Now, this is real weird because in some scriptures they say God to Pharaoh, and then in, like King James, they say a God. Now, I want you all to pay attention to the different translations. Exodus 7, 1, and the Lord, notice they got Lord in capital letters, which is Baal, or Baalim, and the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. All right, so Aaron is the prophet, and Moses is a God right here, not the God. Now, you got some, these demons, they come along, and they translate it their way. Let me read another one. The Lord said to Moses, See, I made you like God to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron will be your prophet. New Living Translation. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pay close attention to this. I will make you seem like God to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron will be your prophet. The English Standard Version. And the Lord said to Moses, See, I made you like God to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron shall be the prophet. The American Standard Bible, the Lord said to Moses, See, I make you as God to Pharaoh, and your brother shall be the prophet. The King James Bible, and the Lord said unto Moses, See, I made thee a God to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be the prophet. And they write God with a small g. The Lord answered Moses, See, I made you like God to Pharaoh. Now, notice as you go into all of these different translations, God's word translations, I made you a God to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron is your prophet. Now, the reason you have all these different translations, because they get stomped up on with this word Elohim. They don't know what the fuck Elohim means. They try to explain it and tell you it's the feminine and masculine, and you go hear all type of explanations for this word Elohim. Elohim ain't nothing but what the Hebrews were calling the Egyptians the Netiru, and they call them in Sumeria the Nunaki. They're all talking about the same damn people in different, really, in different dialects. Just like the word Allah. In Arabic, you say Allah. In Hebrew, you say Elo. In Aramaic, you say Allah. I mean, Allah. In the Canaan, it's El. Eloi. You got all these different words. Even in, uh, in uh, you uh, you got the Bata Allah in uh, in the uh, in the uh, in the Arishi, O Bata Allah. I mean, come on, man, y'all can't see that these ain't different dialects. Just like, okay, you got it going on today. I always give y'all this example. I mean, I think it's the easiest hood example I can give, and it's this word shorty. You know, Shorty came out of New York, and it was referencing females. Shorty, Shorty, you go listen to Lost Boys and hear them, you know, rapping about Shorty. And then the South got a hold of it, and Shorty became Shouty. Now Shouty don't apply to a woman no more. It applied to the man and the woman. This has always been going on. But what these scholars try to do is they try to make the shit complex. It's not complex. Abram came out of Ur, Ur of Chaldees, abode out of the fire, which is Babylon, which is modern-day Iraq, the Mesopotamia, where the Anunnaki are. The Egyptians got a hold of it, and they call it the Netiru. Now, when a European gets a hold of it, because they try to make us look like we worship, you know, dogs and storks and all of this kind of stuff, animal worship. I mean, it's just ridiculous. They say, oh, these are they gods. These are Egyptian gods. 
And you don't ever stop to think, okay, well, the Egyptians didn't have no word called gods. That's a German word. They called it the Niteru. They were real people. What are you talking about? These ain't no God. These are people that were highly intelligent. And so they were looked upon as individuals who were venerated at a very high position that they called the Niteru. Y'all came along with this word and started saying that these are gods. Let me go back to the Emerald Tablets real quick because I can go in on that. And I will go in on, on a little bit more, but... Let me finish with these emerald tablets. And here in the emerald tablets, list ye, O man, to my words of wisdom. Prepare, and ye shall not bind your light. Man is risen, and man is fallen, as ever new ways of consciousness flow from the great abyss below us toward the sun of their gold. Ye, my children, have risen from a state that was little above the beast. Until now, of all men, you are greatest. Yet before thee were others greater than thee. Yet tell I thee, as before these others have fallen, so also shall ye come to an end. And upon the land where ye dwell now, barbarians shall dwell and in turn rise to light. Forgotten shall be the ancient wisdom, yet ever shall live through hidden from men. Now, this is where all, if you listen to this chapter, this is Tehudi telling you that the ancient information is going to get lost. There have been people come before you who have risen to great heights and have fallen also, but that this ancient information is always going to be passed along. Now, when you look in the Kabbalion, it tells you that. This is what these secret orders are for, like these, all these secret orders all over the planet. They are the ones that maintain the light. They keep it burning. This is the secret wisdom, the secret knowledge that's being passed along from generation to generation, which the people who run this planet have in their possession, and they're keeping from you because you are deemed in their estimation not to be worthy to have this information because you are viewed a little bit above a beast. Now, what makes you a little bit above a beast? Well, let's think about that for a second. If all you do is eat, sleep, and reproduce, what makes you different than an animal? As it says in Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars, you know, if people refuse to use their brain, then they, by consent, choose to be stakes on the table for the elite. If you refuse to think for yourself, if you, if you choose not to explore the powers of the mind and what it is truly capable of doing, let's keep going. It says, A, in the land thou callest Kim, races shall rise and races shall fall. Forgotten shalt thou be of the children of men. Yet thou shalt have moved to a star space beyond this, leaving behind this place where thou dwelt. Now, this is telling you that you're headed for the stars. Now, let's think about this for a second. Do y'all really feel like Earth is your final stop? you got an entire universe out there. What is? What if... Why nobody gave you this concept? Why, why Why? can it be that just when we die here on this planet, we just go to another planet and, like, get reborn there and experience that planet? Then down that planet, go to another planet, get reborn there, and have, and, and then, you know, and then the point of the game, we go and jumping around all these planets, we, you know, we're supposed to, like, remember. You know, we keep forgetting. Like, when we go through the process of death and rebirth, there's something that happens to us that makes us forget. Now, I'm going to tell you all this. In this tablet, the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, that is exactly what Tehuti tells you. He, but he tells you what you're supposed to do at the point of death so that you can retain your memory in the next life. This is how you gain immortality, by being able to remember. Oh, that's not too deep for some of y'all. Memory is the key to immortality, being able to remember. You've been here before. You just don't remember. <laughs> You've been here. You know, let's, let's think about this. How, if, if God put his spirit in you, then how can you die? If you are a spirit, how can a damn spirit die? Let's think about that. How can a spirit that comes from God that you don't even understand, that gives you life, 
that gives you volition and the ability to think, how can it be, how can it die? If if what is what you're composed of is the same thing that the creator of the boundless universe is composed of, and he's he's eternal. That's almost like saying that some part of God like ages or some shit, you know. It's like, well, you know, you are made of God, but there's a part of you. You know, the only thing that dies is the body. Go talk to an old person. They'll tell you. You know, I talk to my father. You know, he tell me all the time. He said, my mind, man, I'm still, I'm still 20 years old. It's my body that's not, you know, rolling. You hear the athletes say it. And, and damn, you know, my body, you know, it's the body that ages. It's not the mind. It's not you. You're immortal. Think about that. Peace, Gilly Pope. What's happening, bro? Juice Mountain Pride, goddess of virtue. What's going on? Let's keep going with this Emerald Tablets. We're doing cause and effect. The soul of man moves ever onward, bound not by any one star, but ever moving toward the great goal before him where he is dissolved in the light of the all. Now, this is what they call like a spiritual death. This is when you have ascended to the height where you have fully developed yourself, where you can decide whether or not you want to dissolve your consciousness and merge back into the source. Now, if you want to see somebody who kind of explains that a little bit, there are some books by a man named Franz Barden. Um, there is a book called Frabeto the Magician. And you'll see y'all to read that. It's called Frabeto the Magician. Let me give y'all that. He tells some interesting stuff in there. Uh, I kind of like to give y'all an eclectic selection of books because I want y'all to read, like, different books from all over the place, you know. I'm putting Frabeto the Magician PDF in the chat room. Y'all can download it. Let me see if this is it. I don't know. They might put it on PDF. But it talks about that, merging yourself back into the all. And you'll see this theme being discussed in a lot of esoteric circles. Once you have developed your consciousness to a point where you perfect yourself, then you can make a decision whether or not you want to come and help your other brothers and sisters in their development, or you can choose to, uh, you know, re-immerse yourself back into the source of uh, into the source. Maybe you know you're just tired. You know you've experienced everything there's to experience in the universe. You know all. You know. That's something that's kind of like difficult for us to uh, to uh, conceive because we're not on the, that type of level of development yet. But let's keep going. It says, Know ye that ye shall ever go onward moved by the law of cause and effect until in the end both become one. That's interesting. Amen. After you have gone, others shall move in the place ye live. Knowledge and wisdom shall all be forgotten. And only a memory of gods shall survive. It don't say God, only the memory of the gods. As I, too, the am a God by my knowledge. What did he say? This is to who he's speaking. He says that he is a God by his knowledge. He's not the God. See, this is where the Christians get a, they have a problem. They try to say, well, you're not a God. Okay, well, let's read this. Let's see what God said. I'm not going to listen to no ignorant-ass mortal Tell me I'm not a guy. Well, hell, I'm listening to you. You're a damn mortal. All right? Psalms 82.6. Let's see what the God says. He said, I said, it's almost like God is telling, it's almost like God is telling you, listen, man, listen, Yusuf, when them damn fools down there try to tell you you're not a God, you tell them, I said you are a God and you are all sons of the Most High, but you shall die like men. So here he makes a distinction, okay? They make a distinction between gods and men. So we got to find out, well, who are the gods and who are the men? The men are those who are saying you ain't God. Those are the men. See, we all ain't the same down here. We got some mortals down here who like to worship. And so we give them people to worship because they own that worship time. That's what mortals do. You know, you got to let them do what they do. And let me put this verbatim magician in the chat room it's a pdf if y'all want it it's in the chat room 
So you got to let mortals do what they do. Because right here in the Bible, it tells them very clearly that, hey, you are a God. What am I, I mean, what you don't understand. <laughs> and then Jesus echoes that in Psalms, I mean, in uh, John ten thirty four, is it not written in your law? I say ye are gods. Now, what they're saying right here, is it not written in your law? I say you are Elohims. That is what is real, actually being said. Now, that necessarily means, okay, well, if the Elohim, the Natiru, and the Anunnaki are all the same people, then who are we? Are we descendants of the, Are some people, is what is being said right here is that some people are descendants of these people, and could it be that they feeding y'all all this bad food to suppress some sort of psychic powers that you have? So they keep feeding you from the time you're born so that psychic power won't manifest itself? You know, pharma, uh, pharmaceuticals is a form of witchcraft. You do know that, right? They don't call it witchcraft anymore. You know, back in the day, they would, uh, you know, they said, well, we need one bat claw, we need rat tail, uh, you know, we need uh, some frog legs. You know, they mix that up and make a magic potion. Today, they don't say, you know, like, you know, all these ingredients. I'm going to tell you the ingredients they say now. The ingredients they say now is, uh, I'm trying to read this thing. Hell, I can't even pronounce some of this stuff. Well, you know what it is. Look on the back of a label or something. Look on the back of the label of your medicine and see do you know what any of that stuff means. <laughs> and then think about it for a second and say, okay, well, what is the difference between what a witch is doing, a witch's brew, and what you're doing right here in, in pharmaceuticals? What's the difference? Pharmakia, let me give y'all the word pharmakia. Pharmakia, the use of medicine, drugs, or spells. Strong's Concordance. That comes out the Strong's Concordance Dictionary. Pharmakia, P-H-A-R-M-A-K-E-I-A. Sorcery. They translate it as sorcery. They, they translate it as witchcraft. Okay, so so they say it's pharmaceuticals. <laughs> Let me get out a page on this. So could they be putting y'all under some type of spell where, you know, you know, where uh, y'all got some, like, some powers. Maybe y'all have, like, some, like, you know, some psychometry. That's the ability to touch something and take, pick up the vibrational frequencies from it and tell all about everything you need to know about it. Maybe you got some telepathic capabilities that have been suppressed. Maybe you have some uh, uh, clairvoyance capabilities that have been suppressed. Maybe you have some higher intuitional, intuitional skills that have been suppressed. Maybe they are feeding poison in you and so you cannot demonstrate these powers. Maybe that's the reason why when they come to arrest a black man, they got 50 damn people coming and beating the hell out of them because they don't know if they're going to roll up on one of these people, these beings that got all these powers that can be demonstrated. You ever think about that? Maybe you don't even really know what it feels like to have these powers because you've been living your entire life with your body polluted with poison, with spells and witchcraft put on you. I challenge anybody to call in right now and tell me the difference between pharmaceuticals and witchcraft. You see right there that pharma, that's what that means, witchcraft. <laughs> Let's keep going. Let's read some more. When man again shall conquer the ocean and fly in the air on wings like the birds. This is, this is Tahuti uh, predicting this. When he has learned to harness the lightning, electricity, then shall the time of warfare begin. 
Great shall be the battle between the forces. Great the warfare of darkness and light. Nations shall rise against nation, using the dark forces to shatter the earth. Weapons of force shall wipe out the earth man until half of the races of men are, shall be gone. Then shall come forth the sons of the morning and give their edict to the children of men, saying, O men, cease from thy striving against thy brother. Only thus can ye come to the light. Cease from thy unbelief, O my brother, and follow the path, and know ye are right. Then shall men cease from their striving, brother against brother, and father against son. Then shall the ancient home of my people rise from its place beneath the dark ocean waves. Then shall the age of light be unfolded with all men seeking the light of the gold. Then shall the brothers of light rule the people. Banished shall be the darkness of night. A, the children of man shall progress onward and upward to the great goal. Children of light shall they become. Flame of the flame shall their souls ever be. Knowledge and wisdom shall be man in the great age, for he shall approach the eternal flame, the source of all wisdom, the place of beginning, that is, yet one with the end of all things. A, in a time that is yet unborn, all shall be one, and one shall be all. Man, a perfect flame of the cosmos, shall move forward to a place in the stars. A, shall move even from out of this space-time into yet another beyond the stars. Long have you listened to me, O oh my children. Long have you listened to the wisdom of thought. Now depart from ye into darkness. Now go to the halls of Amenti, there to dwell in the future when light shall come again to man. Yet know ye, my spirit shall ever be with thee, guiding thee feet in the pathway of light. Guard ye the secrets I leave with thee, and surely my spirit will guard thee through life. Keep thy eyes ever on the pathway to wisdom. Keep the light as the goal evermore. Fetter not thy soul in bondage of darkness. Free, let it wing in the flight to the stars. Now depart thee to dwell in the menti. Be thou, my children, in this life and the next. The time will come when ye too shall be deathless, living from age to age, a light among men. Guard ye the entrance of the halls of the menti. Guard ye the secrets I have hidden among ye. Let not the wisdom be cast to barbarians. Then Jesus said, Cast not thy pearls before swine. Secret shall thou keep it for those who seek light. Now depart I, receive thou my blessings, take thou my way, and follow the light. Now, this is real interesting. When you read this, you see a number of different things in here that are being spoken of that you find echoed in the Bible. But the real interesting part is that he's saying that you're going to live from age to age again. Now I heard Dr. Jewel Pukram say something very, very interesting. She said that the doctors do not understand why the body ages. She said that really it is a disease. She said the body should live on and on forever. So death is a disease. Now, you'll see this when you go in the Bible. Let's dip to the Bible real quick. Let's go into Genesis. Real interesting. And we just got, it's just a question I got for the Christians. Because, you know, the Christians say, well, you know, death came up on us because the woman ate the, you know, ate the uh, apple. And then she had to have birth pains. And then, you know, we had to work out in the field and, you know, all this type of stuff. All right, well, let's go to Genesis chapter 4. And then, that, and then that day, that's where we got death from. We started to die because, you know, you know, even though it says that we're going to put him out the garden in Genesis in Genesis chapter 3, so he does not take from the tree of life and live forever. But there's something real interesting in Genesis chapter 4 is what I want to go to. And at the end of the chapter, it says, And Adam made love to his wife again, and she gave birth to a son named Seth, saying, God has granted me another child in place of Abel, since Cain killed him. Seth also had a son and named his name Enosh, and at that time people began to call him on the name of the Lord. Now, this is what's interesting right here in 25. There was a time when Adam or the Adamites walked and talked with these Elohims, but after this slaying of Abel, and the replacement of Seth and then Enos, Enos, then all of a sudden we had to call upon the name of God. Now here's another thing, or what they call calling upon the name of God. 
Here's something else that's real interesting. When you go to 6-2, 6-2, after these angels, what they call angels, come down and have sex with the daughters of men and have babies by them, there's another interesting thing that is said. It said, and here it is, let's read it, real interesting. And 6.3 it says, and the Lord said, and notice it didn't say God said, it says the Lord said. Pay attention, and in some places they put Lord, and in some places they put God. Now, you've got to go into the original language to see why they're doing this. Because it gives you an impression like God got a nickname or something, or another title. Because God is not a name either. The name of God. You know, you got Yahweh, you got Jehovah, you got Jehovah Elohim, you got Elohim, you got Adonai, you got El Shaddai. You know, got all these different names, but all they keep flip-flopping back and forth with y'all is Lord and God. <laughs> <laughs> and Lord God. Sometimes they say Lord God, you know. So it says, and the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years old. So right here, it is saying that in the flesh, the flesh is only going to stay around 120 years. So he's going to take his spirit back after 120. So at the very least, Y'all supposed to be living 120 years old. Now, we do have people on the planet right now who are at least 120 years old. I don't know if y'all know that right now. That are older than... Now, this is what's funny, because you got some people on the planet who are older than 120 years, which makes me wonder about some things about this verse. But the interesting thing is, you are supposed to be living well beyond 60 and 70 years old. You know, you're really not in considered an adult until you're 40. Interesting. All right, y'all, I'm going to go to the phone lines now. I'm going to open back up the phone lines. It's just something for y'all to think about, you know. It's like right here is telling you that you're supposed to be living like 120 years at least. You know, we got people who are doing research on this, and they can't understand, well, you know, how does the body age and die? You know, now, now I've read some stuff that says that your body ages because you think it's supposed to age. What if you, like, was on an island all your life, and you just kind of lived on your island, y'all didn't know anything about growing old? You know, would your mind cause you just to remain, like, young forever? Or is it like we're growing old because we think we're supposed to grow old? You know, I had this uh, in my neighborhood when I was growing up, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of listeners, y'all can, like, testify to this. You ever seen a person, like, they work at a company like all their life, like 30, 40 years, and then the company make them retire, and then like three, four years later after they retire, they die. You know, I remember in my neighborhood there was uh, Mr. Williams. He was down the street. There's some friends of mine. It was uh, his uh, they father, some good friends of mine. You know, and I remember Mr. Williams, you know, Mr. Williams was a real strong black man. You know, he worked at he worked at the Ford plant. I think it was either Ford or Chevy. I can't remember what it was. But, you know, he made real good money, some, uh, some good money. He had a lot of children. And he was a man's man. You know, he took care of his family, you know. He was there for his son, you know. He was there taking care of his family. He's in our neighborhood. You know, we didn't have too many examples of fathers taking care of their kids in my hood, but we did have some, and he was one. And, you know, I always respected him for that. And um, what was interesting is he got laid off. When he got laid off, it seemed like he aged like 20 years and two years. He didn't have no more purpose. He just, and he died. Like, I, I'm going to say probably by about three, it wasn't long after he was forced to retire that he died. How many of y'all know about that? You know, it's like somebody, you know, they, they when they lose their purpose, they just die. They begin to age. Isn't that a mental thing? Then your mind make you start aging faster? You know, I'm also looking at, on the Internet, you got some people out here who are, you know, like they are on the uh, juicing thing, like, like Annette Larkins. I always like Annette Larkins. You know, Annette Larkins like 70-something years old. 
And she can get it. She can still get it. <laughs> Ned Larkins can get it, y'all. She's still looking good. 70 years old, you know. I'm just saying that because I want y'all to go and look at the woman. Annette Larkins. I'm going to put her in there. And, it's a, and she ain't the only one. It's a lot of people out there discovering that if you eat right, and I want y'all to look at her husband. Her husband looking like he about ready to die right now, you know, because he would eat meat, you know, and all, doing all that stuff, won't listen to his woman. She started when she was in her 40s, started to eat the right way, and he never did. He kept eating meat and hamburgers and drinking liquor and doing what he wanted to do. Now she got, now she knows three different languages. Probably got somebody, you know, I'm sure I'm sure she's still, you know, like, you know, doing her thing, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, hey, you know. But anyway, there go the video right there. Y'all can check it out right there. But let me go let me go to the uh phone lines real quick. I'm gonna go to the phone lines. We can talk about this. Phone lines open, 424-222-5250. You got a question or something? I'm going to let y'all carry the conversation. Y'all call in. Y'all just sitting back. On the natural law hour, y'all just be sitting back just listening. I like that, though. I like that. 661-0240. You're on high frequency radio. You survived. You survived. Can you hear me? Hear you loud and clear. What's Hello? going on? I can, can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah. just to make sure. <laughs> hey, I need some help here. I'm trying to do this assumed name, and it asks, it, can you help me with that real quick? No, I can't help you with that. That's kind of rude, okay, don't you think? We sit here talking about spiritual things, and you asking me about it, help oh, you with okay. stuff. Oh, okay. I thought it was. I thought, okay, I was no. wrong. Well, uh, All right. Well, thank you. You can call back on Monday. Appreciate it. All right. All right okay. Don't do that, y'all. Don't call me on my show. And you hear me talking about spiritual things and start asking me about some filings and stuff. Because I'm going to clown you. Because that's, that's, that's not, that's not, that right there, that's kind of rude. We sit there, I just sit there talk all this. You start asking me about something, uh, something totally off topic. I mean, really? Come on now. That's insulting. 909-1861. You're on high frequency radio. Peace to the guys. Peace to the guys. What's happening? Uh, no, I, I just wanted to make a comment on the whole Asian thing, yo. Uh, when I was in when I was in college up uh of Arizona, you got people who are in their twenties talking about, man, I'm old, I'm old, I'm old now, and they impress that into their mind, and they they start getting older faster than they think they should be. Which that that was really interesting when you brought that up with the whole island scenario type thing. Well, I mean, you know, if they think they're old, you know, then you're old. You know, that's what I think. I mean, it's like, you know, it's like right. you, I, the mind controls everything. The reason I do this show, because like the caller who just called in for you, this is what I'm talking about. They want help on stuff, but they don't want to correct themselves. They can't make the connection between paperwork and their mind. They have not really, they have not, they have not, they have no respect for spirituality. Yeah. Uh, everything, I've... every every cause, it starts in the spiritual and mental realm. If you're, why would you deal with effects? If you got paperwork, that's the effect realm. You know, you're not going to, it's nothing's going to help you until you change your condition. If you want to change your outside circumstances, you got to start with your mind. I was talking to some attorneys, and some attorneys told me this. They said, man, all this stuff y'all studying, that UCC stuff, really what y'all are supposed to be studying is the law of attraction. And they understand it because in those circles, they have access to these brotherhoods and so forth. Why is it that all the elite people are involved in some type of organization like Shriners, Masons, um, uh, Illuminati, Rosicrucian, uh, Brotherhood of Light, Order of the Golden Dawn, Order of Melchizedek, whatever it is you want to say, why are the elites, all of them, involved in something like that? And then they sit around and back and tell you that it's something satanic or something like that, so y'all won't have any interest in it, because they want y'all to keep reading this Bible stuff. It's because <laughs> what they don't want you to know, they don't want you ever to come into a knowledge of the power of the mind. Yeah, This is I the most important that. subject. 
It's the most. It is the most imo- most important subject on the planet. Is learning I, I how to think right, but people don't yeah. associate it with that. They don't. They don't. They don't think. They don't think that their problems derive from themselves. They think that their problems come from a devil or the white man's fault or it's the black man's fault or it's something outside of themselves, even in aging like you're talking about. They think that there is some sort of exterior uh, being, entity, circumstance, condition, uh, that is adverse to themselves, that is causing their situation. Never do they ever think or take the time to look within and say, you know what, I'm the one that is creating and doing this. Yeah, I, I think personally from what from people I've grown up and people I've experienced, I mean, I, I played football, so I kind of learned it from that. You know, just it's an it's a accountability aspect of it. People aren't trying to be accountable for themselves, you know, they just, this is just the whole accountability thing because when you, you go into that, you ask people, you know, you just say, be accountable for your actions. Whatever you do, you can just say, I did that because, you know, I chose to do that. You know, people people don't like when you go and say that because, you know, they want to make it seem like there's some external thing acting on everything they do. And it's, just, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting when you get into the mind and all that. There's, there's no accountability. I like what you said, and it's this devil concept. It's this God and devil concept that is at the root of all of that because it makes them believe that there's something outside of themselves. I don't understand. Okay, there's only one God. There's not no multiple. There's only one source of all creation. So there's not anything that's adverse to God. So there couldn't be anything adverse to you. The only thing, this is what they say, The God, they, they, if you listen to the Christians, because they really, they do, are, they are on point when they say this. They'll say, the devil is a liar. The devil is a deceiver. They'll say all of that, but they're right. Because one thing in all of that is the devil never makes you do anything. If the devil could make, they'll say, well, the devil made me do your paper. But if the devil could make you do anything, then why would you have a judgment day? Couldn't on judgment day you just walk in and say, God, let me into heaven. The devil made me do it. Damn, that's. <laughs> that is true. I, I actually, I'm thinking a little bit. Couldn't you just that? that? But isn't, isn't, that, isn't that what people think, though? Isn't that what people think, though? That's what they think. You're thinking I mean, the devil did it. So, you know, if the, the yeah, devil is making you do it, then why is your responsibility in all of this? You have no, absolutely no, you've been absolved from all responsibility for your life. This is how they think. This is what they say, well, you know, I'm washed in the blood of Jesus, and um, Jesus paid for my sins. So let me get this straight. So so when you get baptized, every sin that you've done and every sin that you're going to do has already been paid for. So you have no type of damn responsibility for anything that you do in his life. Yeah, that's, that's, that's real far-fetched, people think. But, I mean, that's, that's kind of been beating into people, though. Let's be real, though. At that, at that too, I got to get the concept because I, I, I don't be understanding it because I'm like, okay, well, this is why the world is in the state of this end because everybody's kind of feeling like, shit, I can do what the hell I want to do. Ain't nobody. You know, I'm going to tell you really what's up, too. They really don't believe in God. They say they do. But let me tell you something. If God really talked to them like they say they do, let me tell you something. If God, the, let me, let me, let's, let me, let me use their example. If a white man just appeared in my office right now with a damn robe on, with a long beard like Santa Claus, just appear, just boom, and he could demonstrate that he's God, you know, like make me 20 years younger and take me back in the future and, you know, all this. And I'm like, damn, I would, that would change my life. You know, I was like, damn, this is God, you know. You know, I would, how could you, if God spoke to you, how could you continue doing devilish type shit? If God, if God spoke to me, and I knew for a fact that God was waiting on me at the end of the road of this life, how could you ever slip and do anything that you? That would scare the shit out of me. I'm like, man, look, I got to do. Man, God is waiting. He already told me. I got to live my life right because He's watching. Because now I don't have to believe anything. Now I know. Oh yeah. I ride with that. I definitely ride with that. But no, that's all that's all I had to had to say, Yusuf. Uh 
All right. Just in concept, Thank you, definitely. Peace to the gods. Peace to the gods, man. I, and, again, uh, appreciate everything you do, man. This knowledge is great. You know what I'm saying? I've been listening to this for about, I'd say, two or three months now. You know, this this natural natural law hour, man, it would really keeps me in tune, to be honest, the stuff you be putting out there. So uh, thanks for that, brother. Appreciate it. All right, no problem, bro. Thank you, and thank you for listening. It's going to get deeper. I'm going to start oh, like yeah. having some real interesting guests and things like that on, too, so it's going to get deeper. All right? <laughs> I'm with it. Peace to the guy. All right, peace, peace. Let me go back to the phone lines. Let me dip over to 713-8525. You're on High Frequency Radio. Hey, brother. How you doing today? All right, bro. I'm doing good. How you doing? This is James, brother. I'm good. It's been a long time. Oh, well, we ain't spoken a long time? Yeah, that's been a long time. Yeah, brother. I've been sitting back from, I'm from Texas, bro. Come on now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What's <laughs> happening? <laughs> What's going on? I got to bring you back home. I'm good, brother. Yeah, you got to bring I'm me back good. home. <laughs> <laughs> hey, What's happening, bro? Love- well, I've been sitting back, man. You know, between you and Jonah and 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 the other cats, bro, I've been on my own grind for for a couple of minutes here, making this shit happen down here. Okay, okay, all right. Well, what you got for me? What you got for me? Well, you know, I'm listening to your to your show. I have I haven't been able to catch all the uh, episodes, but this is a pretty good one because uh, kind of like Paul, I was in the military, and, and when you start talking about the mind. I can recall a lot of the things we did in terms of training where we talked about, you know, mind over matter and, and making us say those type, type of chance to get us to almost transcend what we were doing, you know, be it physical or not. What's your take on that? Well, first of all, first principle is everything is mental. I know in the military um, – uh, they have a. I don't know. Every, I'm not privy to all of the training techniques that the military utilizes, um, but I know that they have things where they try to teach you about pain. Um, you know, increase your threshold of pain. You got to. You know, all, everything is mental. Everything is mental. So they have. Now, if you want me to go deep with it, they have some information they put out on uh, uh, what the government does as far as. Psychic uh, control or, or mind manipulation of the general population that this is going on on a real on a real heavy on a real heavy level, and it all has to do with the subconscious mind. When something gets into the subconscious mind, the subconscious mind puts everything on automatic pilot. That's what brings things in, things into manifestation is the subconscious mind. Everything is about the subconscious, bypassing the conscious mind and accessing the subconscious mind and controlling the individual or making the individual do very miraculous things. It's coming through the subconscious. That would yeah, be I agree with that, bro. I agree with that. You know, that's, that's some of the things. And I'm sure, uh, you know, some of your listeners who are in the military might know, you know, there are divisions or there are departments in various services that are uh, psychological. It's, you know, it's psych warfare. So that's how we go over to Iraq and Iran and, 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 and all these places, and they attack the psyche. And like I say, everything is mental. I know that firsthand. Everything, everything is mental, and we got to learn how to control. I mean, there is a very beautiful chapter. You know, I'm always telling people this in Proverbs, um, where, you know, I don't think people really understand, understood what was being say, uh, said in this, and it's in Proverbs. And it says, guard your heart, for out of it comes the issues of life. And this is Proverbs 4.23. Let me read it to you. It says, above all else. Notice that they put right here in this first clause, above all else. Guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Now, this word heart is the optimal term right here. Because a lot of people, they think heart means something in your chest. But when you go and get a Oxford Underbridge Dictionary and really look and see where this word heart means and what it's talking about, it's talking about mind. It'll tell you that. It's talking about your mind. So what's really being said right here is guard your mind, for out of it flows everything that you do. And you'll see various terms like they say, teach a child the way he should go, and when he's older he will not depart from it. Everything is about the training of the mind, establishing a character that's based off of habits that come from repetition of daily activities that you do on a regular basis. A lot of military, a lot of extraterrestrials like to visit 
uh, the military first because the military is regimented and it is disciplined. This is what people are saying. They say, well, why don't extraterrestrials come down here and talk to me in the general population? They don't talk to you in the general population because you're not disciplined. The military is a disciplined organization. So this is why you have this. So it's like, you know, everything is about the mind. Even in the military, you know, you can tell a guy who's been in the military, he's disciplined. Even in prison. Uh, prison uh, uh, makes people disciplined. Uh, like, make yeah. them make up their bed. Like, I'm, I'm like that. It's like, I have to make up my bed every day. I have to make up my bed because it's like, I don't feel like my day will be right if I don't order my life from the time I get up in the morning. You know what I'm saying? It's like I get up, right, you know, right, say, okay, right. I got to make up my bed. I got to, I got to take a shower. I got to, you know, shit, shower, and shave. I got to do everything because now it's like my whole, my whole day flows from that. It's like an right. energy well, that I look at, you know, well, that flows from it, and it's a discipline. So everything is the mind. Everything is the mind. Well, you, like, I, on my last note, brother, I will say one thing: high frequency hash taught me, or at least got me trying to do is this uh, meditation. Man, it's very difficult. You know, to concentrate on something for, what, five minutes? Very difficult. You should start out with 60 seconds. Dude, lay on your back and visualize something for 60 seconds. Because you got to understand the mind is also like a muscle. All right, look, when you go, like we would go to the weight pile, and you've never been on the weight pile, and I put you on the bench, and I was like, I'm going to put 225 on the bar. And you ain't been doing no bench pressing. That thing gonna probably kill you. It's gonna come out the bar and it's gonna like, hey man, get this off, get this off of me. So I'm gonna have to lift it up off of. So I said, okay, we're gonna break this down a little bit. I'm gonna use the bar. I'm gonna put some 25s on here. We're gonna start you out with 95. All right. So I put that on there, and 95 pounds gonna feel heavy. I'm gonna say, okay, give me 10. He's like, damn, that shit. And we're gonna do that about twice a week for six weeks. Around, I say, about the third month. You're going to be probably near 225, and you're going to take 225 off the bench, and you're going to be able to hit that, and it's not going to feel as heavy as it used to feel anymore. Matter of fact, it's going to get light. It's going to get to a point where it's going to get real light, real light. You're like, oh, man, this thing is light. But you think back, it's like, well, because your muscles have not, not been conditioned. Well, the mind works in exactly the same way. You have to understand as below, so above. So when you first come in and try to do mental exercises, don't try to put 225 on the bench because you're going to walk off the weight pile. Like, and you know, then your arms going to be hurting and everything. They're going to be real sore. It's like, damn, man, my arms is killing me because you probably try to do some curls because you try to go out there and show off and got, dry, 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 uh, grab some real heavy dumbbells and everything to do some curls with when you ask you to start it with some 15. Or some tens and start conditioning the muscle so it gets acclimated to exercising, and then it'll just grow. Well, the mind is the same way. So start out with thirty. Well, at, least me, at least give me twenty-five on the curls, dog. Come on, now. I, you, know, you want some twenty-five? At least, <laughs> at least twenty-five, bro. Come I, I on, now. People this. looking. I'm not ashamed. <laughs> I'll go in there and start with fifteen. Because let me tell you what: if I put them fifteens on there and told you to give me give me fifty reps. 15 pounds become yeah. real heavy. Real heavy. You see what I'm real saying? Heavy. So don't you don't you don't you don't trip out just because it's 15 pounds. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no I, I, I'm agreeing with you. I just I just want you know messing around a little bit. Like we were on these ships, we were on the ship and we were lifting weights, and uh, the ship is like jail. To be honest with you, because you, yeah, you can't go nowhere. Military <laughs> the prison is copied after the military. Only thing is, ain't no women there. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Well, we, well, no, I believe it. Look, we're doing these uh, weight. We're on the bench, and we started off. You know, we all doing about two twenty five. All big, big boys. We got out right. to see. So you start hitting these swells, and we learned very quickly. We had to put on literally twenty five pounds on each on each end because when the ship would dip, the gravity would make that you know make that ninety five pounds feel like three fifteen. And you never knew when you're going to hit it. So, and, and what you're saying, I do agree with. And I'll have to start with the 60 seconds because trying to go two and three minutes was just killing me. Yeah, because what will happen is, you know, you, you got to do it. You got to do you, And then, like, anything has to be consistent. Like, you got to start out, okay, let me do 60 seconds. I'm going to just visualize. And then what happens is your mind, you begin to see that your mind is very sneaky. 
because you'll be sitting there thinking about one thing, and then the next thing you know you lose yourself, and you're thinking about something else, and you forget that you were supposed to be doing an exercise. Like, damn, I'm supposed to be sitting here thinking about doing, you know, doing a 60-minute exercise. Now I'm thinking about, next thing you know, you're thinking about the game. Damn, what my woman doing and everything? Why she ain't calling me yet? Oh, man, well, damn, I got to make some money today. Damn, I forgot to call that dude today and everything. You know, you know what I'm saying? All this stuff starts floating through your mind, and you get it drifts to somewhere else, and, you know, it's like, man, I got and then you have to be, and then you have to bring your awareness back and bring it back, all right? That's an exercise. All right? That's like right. working out. You got to do that. You got to keep working it out and keep working it out. And eventually it will extend itself where we'll get longer and longer and longer and you'll be able to do it. Now, another way that you can do it is utilizing pictures. For instance, like if you want a new house, you should have a picture of the house that you want somewhere. And you have to make it believable because there is an emotional element. The energy that has to be put in motion is through the emotion. All right, so to put the energy in motion, you have to use the emotion. So that for that emotion, you have to have a belief that you can get it. Like if you just say, well, I want a billion dollars next week, well, you don't really believe you can get a billion dollars in one week. But if I tell you, hey, man, get $200 by next week, that's within your realm of belief. And you say, I can do that. So now you can put some emotion behind it. And some of us have various varying levels of belief. There are some people who do believe that they can get a billion dollars in a week. It's within their realm of belief, and they can make it happen. So you have to have something that the energy that is required to manifest it has to be within your paradigm, within your belief system. Now, you can enhance your belief system by changing your association and also by acquiring knowledge. Your belief system is not going to grow hanging around the same people all damn day. And they think the way, they, they, unless, they all, unless they get on board and want to grow with you, you know, if y'all get together, right. your friends and everything, hey, man, look, man, we need to go out and get, make a million dollars. Hey, I'm with you, brother. What we got to do? Now, in that case, fine. What? You know, but it's a vibratory frequency that has to be elevated within yourself so you can attract that because the frequency of a million dollars is vibrating at a certain rate of speed, and you have to match that rate of speed. Right? You're now, right. I don't want to be the smartest in my crew. You, know. you don't want to be the smartest man in your crew. If you're the smartest man in your crew, it's time to change crews. You always want to keep elevating but, uh, yourself. Surround yourself yeah, with people yeah. smarter than yourself. You know, hey, but that, I you know it, it, man, I'm a... Oh, okay. I'm going to duck out here. But, uh, yeah, man, come on back to Texas, man. You've been up there too long anyway. I am coming back. To, I know. I, I'm not, you know, I got to come back to Texas. You know, I, I'm, coming back, I'm coming back home. I mean, I'm coming back home, man. Come on. I'm, I'm, I'm on, right now I'm traveling the world. Traveling the world, man. That's one of my goals. It's on my bucket list. Travel the world, you know. Traveling the hey, world right now. I heard, look, last night I heard you went to Hawaii. I used to live there. And uh, I saw a lot of things myself. I got to travel some of the islands, so. I got a pretty good idea of what you're talking about. Yeah, about Melanesia and Polynesian, the Polynesian yeah, Islands and the yeah. Melanesian. They call oh, it yeah. the Melanesian Islands. That stands for melanin, and it, that's where they say all the dark people are at. I mean, it just, man, you know, it's just like people don't know. People got to travel and really see what's going on, man, really see. I mean, people look at me like, man, you're a black, intelligent man. Asking intelligent <laughs> questions. I mean, people act like I was damn, like, like they'd never seen a black man. <laughs> some of them, you know, it's from them islands, because, you know, they got them in, in some of them, when you go on some of them tours, some of them people who work there, they from the other around, like Tonga and, you know, Fiji and yeah. all these different it's islands fine. around there. Yeah, and and they ain't had too much, inter- and some of them are light skin and some of them are dark skin, and they ain't had too much interaction with other people. So they just now getting out, out in the world themselves. And then they and then they being influenced by these Mormons, who teaching them stuff because the Mormons is the one that's in control of all of this stuff. I mean, and then that's why you got to go, and this is why I tell people, go and look at the history of these religions. Y'all stop just accepting stuff on its face because the people who are still in control of these religions understand their history, and they understand what they have to do. They, under, they, they understand that, yes, times are changing, but a, a, guy, a, a damn tiger, a damn uh, a leopard can't change his spot. No, you're right. 
Well, I've tried to you, man. Keep, you keep doing your thing, man. You and Jonah and Issa and, and, and David and, and the Sister Hale, y'all doing a great job. All right. Thank you, bro. Thank you. All right. Let me go okay, to – Peace. Let me go back to the – okay, the phone lines are open, y'all. It's, y'all can call in and ask the question. Four two four two 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 fifty two fifty. It's open form, you know. Just don't call in talking about no UCC stuff and all that. I got another show for that. We're not talking about no UCC stuff and all that kind of stuff. Oh, four four oh five eight seven. You're on high frequency radio. Yes. Hey, I had a question about this incubus and confidence. Is this the appropriate time to ask? No. The, the incubus no. and the confidence. The, the the spirit. This okay. The spirit. Okay. The I didn't hear you. Say it one more time. I'm sorry. The incubus and the concubus. Oh, the incubus and the succubus. <laughs> oh, the succubus. I'm sorry. That was throwing me off. Like what? <laughs> you're, you're talking about an incubus and a succubus, and an incubus okay. is a an incubus is a is a as a male sexual spirit, and a succubus is female. Okay. And you know how y'all females do. Y'all suck the life out of us and everything, you know. I thought that that was a very, very uh, appropriate term, succubus, because after we have sex with y'all, I'm serious. You know, I feel like like females is like vampires because, you know, like after we have sex with y'all, y'all just like, you know, it's like we be tired, like, you know, it's all our spirit is going up in you. You taking, you know, y'all get all the money and the sex, I mean, I don't understand that. You know, it's like we got to get money to give y'all and give y'all some sex. And then y'all act like re- y'all reward us with sex like you're doing us a favor. But, damn, you getting that too. I mean, I just, yeah, I just kind of feel like y'all yeah. getting over, you know, in some ways, you know. That's just my thing. But, anyway, let me talk about this succubus. <laughs> a succubus. I just feel like we're pleasuring, pleasuring each other on that note. But um, go ahead. But yet- Go ahead. I apologize. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Let me talk about this succubus real quick. A succubus okay. is a female demon or supernatural yeah. entity in folklore. Traced back to medieval legend, it appears in dreams and takes the form of a woman in order to seduce men, usually through sexual activity. And the male counterpart is the incubus. Religious traditions hold that repeated sexual activity with a succubus may result in the deterioration of health or even death. Now, let's talk about that real quick. And I want all the men out here to pay attention to what I'm about to say. You can orgasm too many times and give yourself brain damage. Start paying attention if you orgasm too much. Like some of y'all want to sit back and masturbate five, six times a day and think that that's great because you masturbated so many times a day or something like that. And it has a very, and it has a, uh, it, it will reduce your health. And in, in addition to this fact, it also reduces your confidence, and it makes it very difficult for you to talk to women when you orgasm too much. You know, you're getting, you know, your sperm, giving away your sperm so much. Now, also, you can create these entities as well because the sperm can be utilized as a sort of elixir. you got to understand that you are a god. You do create these beings. Now, what it's talking about, the succubus, is they come to you in your dreams at night time. At right. night, and make you masturbate. Some people claim that they actually have sex with these entities. These entities now, a lot of people have to war with these in, 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 these entities at night because you call them. Like we had a, a, a gentleman on here who was talking about the succubus and the incubus, or uh, what we call familiars. Another one's called familiars. Let me give y'all this. Called familiar spirits. What is a familiar spirit? A familiar spirit is a demon that is summoned by a medium with the intention that the spirit summoned will obey his or her command. Often familiar spirits are believed to be the spirits of people who have died. And it talks about familiars in Deuteronomy 18.11. Okay. Now, so sometimes succubuses and incubuses, they are referred to as familiars. Now, these elementals, you, another word you hear is elementals. Let me give you all that one, too. Elementals. You said it's a, it's a familiar spirit? 
Yeah, that sometimes it concerned uh, 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 can be considered familiars when they're under the control of someone. That's what a familiar is. It's an entity or a demon that's under control of someone. Now you have then there, there are people who, who invoke demons and control them. Y'all better be perfectly aware of that. That's why I told you if you want to see an example of that, read for Beto the Magician. For Beto the Magician is based off of reality. It is not a made up story. It was just cast in the phone. They're going to tell you that. It's talking about the 99 different lodges that are around the planet and how these people invoke these demons and how, they, and how, and how they're guided by these demons. You're going to, you need to be very familiar with that world. Now, you got okay. something called elementals. And elementals are based off the elements, of course. You know, you have the fire elements, the water elements, the earth element, right. and the air element. And within each of these elements are entities that live and exist and have consciousness. Now, their consciousness is not, this one you you see Lord of the Rings, they're kind of like going into that a little bit, the elementals, when they talk about the fairies and the nymphs and the, and the gnomes and the, uh, and the uh, dwarves and the uh, fire demons and the uh, trolls and all these different things, earth elements and water elements and air elements and fire elements. You're going to see that kind of be talked about loosely, but it's going to be cast in the form that the Europeans wanted, of course. You know, they're going to put it all, everything in their, in their type of way of thing. Right. But these spirits, now it should be evident that spirits exist in water because water responds to thought. When you speak, right. if you want to prove this, they got, they got a book called Messages from Water. This is where y'all get in the Christian world to pray over your food and pray over it before you actually eat it. What you're actually doing is you're communicating with it because the ele- elements in it are entities that have a consciousness that will respond to you. Right. Hmm. Um, now, wow. I never knew this- that it Go ahead. Yes, this is what... This is why you have something called holy water that's been prayed over. Right. And they throw it on the vampires, and it eats them up, and all of this stuff. All of this stuff has a basis in fact, in science, in alchemy. These are alchemical processes that are going on. And you have to understand that everything comes from the all, which is the source, and the source is living. Everything around you is living. They just have different types of existence than you. Just because you don't identify it or you can't communicate with it doesn't mean that it doesn't have intelligence. That's right, and I've said that before. Like a tree. I just, I, there are some entities that can communicate with trees. Right, right. But because you can't, you'll cut it down in a minute. Right. And have, you have no respect for nature because you don't understand nature is a living entity. But let me ask you something. Now, is it wrong, you know, because I've had, I've had um, this incubus to come upon me. And, I, you know, um, different things happen. But um, my question, is it wrong to, um, because you're not in your, you're, you're in, and, and you're not where you're physically responsible for what the incubus do to you. So, Why come you're not? There's not. Listen, let me tell you something. They they got a. Have you heard of something called psychic self defense? Psychic self defense. Yes, I've heard of it briefly. Okay. All right. You have control over everything. There is nothing. Nothing can do to you unless you allow it to. Let me read this to you. Psychic self defense. I'm going to write it down. Write it down again. Energy protection. They got all different things. In essence, I'll give you the short form of psychic self-defense. Psychic self-defense is what is being said when it says in. Didn't I just read it out of the Bible to you? Guard your heart, for out of it flows the issue of life. And the heart, I told you that heart means mind. Guard your mind. Now, 
the guardian at the gate is the is the conscious mind, which is the will. The conscious mind is the seat of the will, so you have to develop your will power. Now, in essence, what you just said to me is that this elemental does things to you because you have a weak will. No, 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 no. Your willpower I, I, is not strong enough to fight off this elemental. It only happened to me once. Right. Or maybe I understand. That's fine. Let me let me let okay. me give you an example. Have you ever seen that that movie Lord of the Rings? And yes. I think it's the I second movie. The, thing. the second movie is the is the one I like. And um, in there, you know, uh, the wizard they running across. They running from this fire demon. All right, it's a demon, right. and okay. he's, ch- he's about to chase them over a bridge, and then the wizard t- says, you shall not pass, and then the uh, the demon pulls out his sword to hit him, and he, he just blocks it off. That's that. What you're looking at is a bi- battle of will. It's your okay. willpower, and that's why he said, you shall not pass. He's getting his willpower up to battle this demon, and then this demon at the last minute pulls him down into the pit, and he goes down to the pit, and battles the demon and makes it out. All this is about your willpower. It's a battle of wills. You have weak will okay. and a strong will. And a weak willed individual will bend very easily to a strong willed individual. The people who are running the planet have stronger willpower than the people who are, you know, just are working as the slaves. Okay. This is really what is going on. So are there exercises, there are exercises that you can utilize to strengthen your will as also in changing your diet. One of the biggest things that affect the willpower is fluoride. Fluoride? Fluoride affects your willpower. Wow, okay. All right. This is a fact. But what is your Sullivan? You're, I'm practicing celibacy, so I mean, celibacy what about is that? not it, celibacy is not all of that good unless you are doing it for a particular purpose. You need to have some male energy. You need some <laughs> uh, in your life. Okay, you got to go out there and get some. You know, you got to go out there and get some. You know, I'm just gonna be telling you the truth, you know, because you don't want to be suffering from dick deficiency syndrome. Because you know, when that stuff starts happening and everything, y'all get all, you know, y'all difficult to deal with and everything. So you gotta go, you gotta go out. And listen, don't be falling into that. You know, I'm gonna be celibate and all that. No, you need some masculine energy, all right? You need, but you need to be very selective in what energy that you allow to come into your life. All right, so it's like, so, you know, now, for if you're doing a certain purpose, maybe you have some sort of um, uh, ritual that you need to perform or something like that, there are periods when it is necessary to be celibate and take yourself from that particular energy. But it's not healthy, even for a man. Like, for instance, I'm, I'm, I'm right now participating in something well, I'm restricting my sexual activity, but it's only for a period of time. It's not for a long period of time. I'm trying to achieve something spiritually because the semen, the retention of the semen, has a very, very powerful and profound spiritual effect. It's a creative energy. Okay. Well, I've been doing this for a while, so I don't even know. Like, I I think I'm pretty strong. I'm very spiritual, so I... I I just think that uh, that I didn't even know that it was a demon spirit. I've read it in the Bible, and I just recently started reading the Quran, but um, I didn't know that it was a demonic spirit. That's why I wanted to call in and ask you: Was it does a person supposed to feel guilty if they were to have I'm a, a? I'm gonna tell uh, you like you know, this. I, I'm gonna I'm tell you like this. I read this off the internet. They call it a demon. I. Uh, but it is a really what it is a mental construct because you can create you create this from your mind. You know, okay. you are okay. you know you're creating this with your mind. You have to realize that thoughts are things. So these are mental okay. constructs. That's why they're they call them spirits. But you know another a, a, a term that is synonymous with spirit is mind. So these are mental entities that do visit other people that you create, and they do get a semi level of intelligence that makes them want to keep on living. 
And then keeping on next, you're calling them a demon because they need your energy to, to subsist off of because they really need to survive. So I have to ask the question, does that make them a demon because they need your energy to keep living? You know what I'm saying? It's right, like, right. It, it's adverse to you. It is adverse to you. That's why you call it a demon or you call it negative or you call it evil because it is adverse to you. But this elemental is doing what it needs to do to survive. Okay. Okay. I just want I'm throwing it out there for you because I wanted you to understand how nature operates, that in nature there's really no such thing as good and evil, that everything okay. has, has a purpose. You know, everything has a purpose in existence. There isn't anything that isn't brought into existence that doesn't have a purpose that uh, that can contribute to the all, because we're all in the all. You can't take from the all because where would you put it? You can't add to the all because where would you get it from? Everything is in the all. Oh, is Everything is in the mind of the all. So, okay, I hope I didn't lose you too much, but. Is it a vibration as well? Everything in creation is a vibratory force. Okay. Look, okay. look at some of the movies when they say, um, when you start looking at magicians or the mad guy, and they, they talk about, well, I'm not even going to say that. Let's talk about the Christians for a second. Christians speak okay. things into existence. And when you spell right. cast. Spell, S-P-E-L-L, you spell. Words are vibratory forces. Everything oh. in existence is a vibratory frequency. That is, so that makes it, ne that necessarily leads you to the conclusion that words have power. If everything is a vibration and thought okay, right. precedes a word. So thoughts are, are a higher frequency than the actual you speaking it. So you can think things into existence. This is why, this is where the, law, uh, the people in the law of attraction community are saying thoughts are things. Thoughts are things. Mm -hmm. They do have an existence. Their existence is just in the uh, uh, spiritual and mental world. Once that frequency starts, that vibration begins to slow or begins to have what's called a gross body or comes into gross matter, comes down into the uh, physical plane. The physical plane is subject to time and space, which is a good thing. Because if we didn't have time yeah. and space on the physical plane, your thoughts would instantly manifest themselves. And that would be detrimental right. to the individual who cannot, who cannot control his thinking. This is what this is this right here. If you think about it, is what is is what gives you hell. Because if you haven't learned wow. how to control your thought, you can give mm -hmm. yourself hell. Right, that's right. Somebody I know is doing that right now. So I I, I got the thoughts on 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 lock. Like I said, I meditate a lot and so on and so forth, but I wasn't real sure about this incubus and concubus. I, I mean, succubus. I didn't know if I should feel guilty about it. I didn't know how I should, how I should feel. And I had this oh, conversation no, with feel, a friend. You know, you shouldn't feel guilty about it, about anything. You know, you should learn what it is and then learn how to master it and control it. Everything happens in your life. It's a purpose and a reason for it happening for you. And it's brought for your spiritual growth and your spiritual development. I mean, you are at least you are aware of these entities. There are people who are not even aware of these entities. So, you know, right. so, you're even, so you know about these entities and their existence. And you have to understand also that there is nothing to fear. Fear is a, an illusion. The universe was okay. created from love. All right? Fear is an That's acronym right. for false evidence appearing real. What do you have to fear? The only thing you have to fear is fear itself. If the creator of the boundless universe, you have his spirit in you, why do you have to fear something? Remember, I said the devil is a liar. The devil is a deceiver. The devil is a, a you know, he may fool you, he may do anything, but he can't make you do anything. He can make you afraid. He can threaten you, give you up, put you under mm -hmm. duress or coercion, but nobody can make you do anything. It is a voluntary universe. The creator of the boundless universe gave you willpower. You got to learn how to use it for your benefit. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you, wise one. All right. Thank you, sister. All right. Let me go back okay. to the phone line. Let's go to do 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 seven one four nine four eight eight seven one four nine four eight eight. Hey, peace, yourself. Peace, yourself. Peace, what's going on, brother? What's happening? What's happening? All right, man. Ain't much, ain't much. It's Darwin calling in, man. Hey, hey I was uh, hey, what's going on, man? This is a good show. It's 
a really good show. But I was reading something earlier that you had just mentioned that when you were talking about, you know, how we lose our energy every time we, we bust off. And uh, it's, it's pretty good. It says every time you ejaculate, your body assumes that it is getting re- getting ready to create a new life. Yep. According according to the Tao, all the organs and glands in your body give their best energy, what is called orgasmic energy. In many species, once this energy has been given, once the seed has been lost, the body of the animal starts starts to deteriorate. So salmon, for example, die soon after they spawn. And then yep. it goes on to say, any anyone who has spent time gardening, I think we all have done that, knows that plants die or become dormant once they give their seed. Yep. And then, you know, just, yeah, so basically, you know. And it was a stand in the Bible to waste your seed on the ground. You know, you don't waste your seed. You know, mm-hmm. you know, like uh, people, uh, 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 people do not waste your seed on the ground. You know, like people with, uh, 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 like, uh, you know, they have sex with a woman and pull out and then, you know, spill their seed on the ground. Uh, you know, you're supposed to, you know, you're supposed to plant your seed in the woman, you know. And the woman, yeah. you know, it's supposed to be, right. you know, I heard somebody say, I, I'm going to say this, it is actually very healthy for a woman to swallow semen. It's very healthy. And this is... Um, I guess I'll say this over there, how a woman can get to know you because she's taking on your spirit. That's your spirit. That's your spirit. Yeah. Right. You know, you know, I don't, I'm not going to get into that over the air. But yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It, I feel in, you know, it, it is. And so when you're giving up your spirit, yes, you're, you're, you're giving up, you're, you're, you're killing yourself. Literally. <laughs> Literally. I'm thinking that. That goes with that aging, what you're talking about with the aging, man. We, uh, I don't know, you know, I, I think maybe, you know, I'm just moving into my upper realm, you know, going into the 40, 40s, you know, and um, I think maybe it seems like as we get older, I don't know, you know, maybe we start, you know, having more sex as men because we maybe getting, you know, feeling like we're getting at the end of the time where we might not be able to get it, so we might, so we start aging rapidly. I don't know, man, I just see. You know, folks in, uh, around my age group and even a little bit older, and, you know, folks that have been there already, like, I just look at how the men, you know, how we age, man, and, like, you know, I don't know. I think that uh, when we do that, you know, we got to find a way to preserve, I think, that energy. We don't we don't realize that that's one of the things that we in the in that book that I'm reading, it says that we got to understand nature's law. I think that was how they ended that, that paragraph. It says that... Uh, Though luckily for us, we do not die after ejaculating. I always know that we are part of nature and that we must, we must understand nature's laws. So that's pretty the deep. The secret for a man is his sperm. His sperm yeah. is very sacred, and it is a power. It's an elixir. It's a lot of different things. It's a creative force, and you retain that. And I'm going to tell you, they got this in in various books. If you go and get... Think and Grow Rich by um, Napoleon Hill. He has an entire chapter devoted to se- transmutation of sexual energy. And what mm-hmm. it is is that sexual energy will always find an outlet. The outlet that we're giving it is physical. We're, we're ejaculating into a woman. But you can have a mental ejaculation as well because that energy goes to the brain. And if you don't believe me, y'all can test this for yourself. If you're a chess player, pl- try to play a game of chess before when well, you retain sperm and watch how how your concentration and everything is so much better, and then after you ejaculate, try to play chess or any type of game that requires concentration, like pool or anything like that. Pay attention to what happens before you ejaculate and after you ejaculate and try to go into some activity. The problem with the average man out there is he doesn't pay attention to nothing. He don't pay attention to anything. He's not paying attention to himself, and he doesn't associate things that's happening in his life with things with uh, with conduct that he has. All right. So if you are, you know, with with this ejaculation and everything, you are killing yourself. Now there's a doc, there's only one doctor that I've know that went in on this. Now I figured all this out on my own, kind of just by just paying attention. But there's a doctor. 
He got a book called Anytime You Want, As Long As You Want. Let me put it in the chat room. It's called It's called Anytime for As Long As You Want. And the doctor's name is Charles Runnels, R U N E L S. He has a YouTube, he has one little YouTube thing. But this I'm gonna put this book in the chat room. Y'all should read this book. Anytime as long as you and this is the actual doctor and he talked about how his intelligence now he went back and did the research and all of the geniuses throughout history they all had one thing in common and one of the things they had in common is they retained a sperm. You retain your sperm, it increases your intellectual capacity. Your mental and psychic power begins to increase. Now, it's very difficult to do this. Now, you have uh, some other books like called The Tao of Male Sexual Energy. There's another book I call The Tao of Male Sexual Energy. T-A-O, that's how you pronounce Tao, all right, is T-A-O of Male Sexual Energy. Well, they talk about that. This sexual energy... I'm giving you, I'm sending y'all the book right now. The book ain't that easy to find. I had this book way back in the day, The Taoist Secrets. And it has some secrets, too, like I'll give y'all one. Like when you have sex with a woman, like they have this technique, like when you penetrate a woman, you do it in a series of uh, of ten. Like you penetrate her for ten strokes, go deep into her, give her a tongue kiss, come and you, and then pull out just at the tip and then do nine strokes. Penetrate her deep, tongue kiss her deep, then do eight and do all the way down to one. And what this does is it pulls all of the air out of the vagina and causes a suction, a suction type thing. And there's supposed to be a certain number of strokes. They say you're supposed to give every woman at least 300 strokes, 300 to 300 to 500 strokes to satisfy a woman. But it goes into some of a lot of these details and techniques that you can utilize to cultivate the energy, and it should make sex interesting also. Because you go in there, now you're going in, in, in the bedroom like a damn scientist. Instead of just, you know, just going in there gung-ho. But it's male sexual energy. And then there's also this book. Oh, look at Doc. She's saying three, six, six, and nine. I use ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and then go back up to... You know, 10 again. Y'all supposed to be paying for this information and everything, but it's a whole bunch. <laughs> Y'all supposed to be paying for this. But anyway, I'm trying to read that. Stroke minimum, a thousand. Somebody said a thousand stroke minimum. A thousand stroke. I deal with a thousand strokes, you know. You know, another thing, that if you want to keep yourself from orgasming, like, you know, when you're going in a woman and you feel like you, you're, you're about to come, you should start taking deep breaths because the reason you're orgasming because you're not breathing correctly. I guarantee you if you start, if you start um, taking deep breaths, when you feel that need to orgasm come on, it will start to dissipate. It is in breath control. It's in your breath control. Or, you know, you can smoke a blunt. You know, that might help you too, you know. <laughs> you can smoke one. I think that works for some people. But uh, anytime for as long as you want, strength, genius, libido, and erection, integrative sex transmutation, 15-day course for men to improve sex and life. I really like this book because it talks about 72. Now, Dr. Malachi is York put out a book a while back called The um, Sex Life of a Muslim. I don't know if there's any, um, I had that book for the longest. I don't know why I gave it to somebody. But in that book, he talks about how it takes 72 days for sperm to mature. 72 days. Now, this number 72 comes up quite a lot in spiritual magic. A lot it comes up. I'll give you an example. Like it was 72 judges. That created the Uniform Commercial Code. You're going to see the S. This is where you'll begin to see how this magical and this esoteric world starts to merge with what y'all think is just regular, 
You know, all this stuff is around y'all all the time. Y'all just don't know what to look for. You're, 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 you're asleep. You're dead. You're dead. You're dead asleep. <laughs> you know, you don't know. It's around you everywhere you look. You just don't see it. So some women... Uh, some he said many women are unlearned on that God. Uh, yeah, they are unlearned. A lot of women don't understand the importance of also of having sex with the right, like their virginity. You know, they just think a hymen is on there. Just God just put a hymen on their vagina just for you know a, a reason, a specific reason. You have to understand that the first man that you have sex with, you're going to carry that spiritual energy, and that's going to kind of that is that that first sexual encounter is going to um, mold or shape your life. Let me just say it like that. And that every time you have sex with a man, you are retaining certain energy. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's a bad thing. What it means is that you need to be very conscious of the type of man that you have sex with. For instance, there are, uh, like, that's why wealthy people only have sex with wealthy people, because they don't want the spirit of poverty. So they're not going to have sex with a poor person. That's why it's very difficult. You know, in a certain kind of way, certain women who only want to have sex with a certain kind of man is a good type of thing. I mean, it's like, you know, and then you you as men, you should only want to have sex with certain kind of women because you don't want to just be indiscriminate like that. The reason that a virgin is valued is because she's like a clean slate, and that man doesn't have to worry about what type of spirit He's taking on when he uh, when he enters her. This is where all this stuff is coming from. So you got to get down to the you know to the uh, you know to the science of all of this stuff too. Instead of just going out there just indiscriminately doing Somebody said they couldn't put what link you couldn't pull up. You could, you could. Somebody said they couldn't pick up a link. What link to what? Let me put this in the chat room again. It was a transmutation of sexual. It's a good book right here. Y'all should read it, and y'all should look and see these people in history who've been talking about you know about how to become a genius. And it's difficult now. It's like it's not saying that you don't have sex now, man. This is not saying don't have sex. This is saying learning how to return retain your sperm. You can actually have an orgasm without ejaculating. Very difficult to do, but that requires a level of discipline. Okay, cool. All right, anybody else had a question? Somebody else want to call in, hit one? Are y'all just listening right now? Y'all just kind of listening? I'm telling y'all this what is this esoteric information is real interesting. This is the science that y'all are supposed to be this is the real school of thought y'all are supposed to be getting into. All that stuff in public school they teaching y'all, that's just say I'll go get a job and take care of, and make somebody else rich. <laughs> Let's train them how to go out here and work for us and keep society running so we can sit on our ass all day and do nothing. <laughs> Let me bring in some more callers real quick. We got some. I think there's a Y right here, 818 0302. 818 0302. Peace to the gods. Peace to the gods. What's happening? What's up, Yusef? I've been watching your show for a while. I really like it. I always listen in. You and Ali. Uh, Appreciate this it, is bro. Bay. This is a Tomb Bay in LA. If you're free too, we could, uh, if you had time, like I would go anywhere you're at. But uh, my question would be, uh, have you studied about the um, pineal gland? Like, suppose I raw and everything. Yeah. Have you researched pineal that gland? at all? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, like, well, I guess I, my question about that is, like, how long would you – have you, like, tried to master it or is it, like, a certain amount of time that you have to open that up? Or what, what would your take on that be? I'm gonna tell you my take on it is that you want know, because they call the pineal gland the third eye, all right? Yes. And um, what I my take on it would be with this, I'm 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 approaching this from the point of with my diet, mm-hmm. all right, and in getting control. 
because I, I feel I, this is just me. I really feel like our bodies are polluted. How yeah. can anything in your body, in the endocrine system of the body, operate at its full capacity if you're full of pollutants? Now, the only thing that, I'm, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this: if you've ever fasted for even ten days just on water, now I'm talking about just a straight water fast, which is difficult to do, you're mm-hmm. gonna see so much stuff come out of your body and the chemicals and everything, you're going to know the average person does not really understand how much poison is in his body. It's not, it, doesn't even, it doesn't even amaze me that people only live 60 or 70 years. You're supposed to live much longer than that and be much more youthful in those ages than what you are. You're killing yourself by the food. So when we're talking about the penile gland, that's almost like me saying, okay, you want to operate this car, that you ain't changed the oil in in, like, you know, five years or something like right. that, ten years. You know, I'm not going to get very far with it. So in my – I always make health a very integrative part of any type of psychic development. That's just me, you know. And it's difficult. Trust me, I'm not saying that it's easy. It's, it's, not, it's not easy because in a lot of people the pineal gland has been calcified. Mm-hmm. So it's not operating at its full capacity. It looks like a cone. It's cone shaped. Now, when you go into history, also you're going to see even in Samaria, China, you're going to see them venerating Buddha. All of them venerating this pine cone, which is talking about the penile gland or the third eye. Even in the Bible, do you know the Bible no. talks about it? Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. They are, they have it in the Vatican. They have the Pope has it on his cane and everything. We do. It's like secret messages all over the place. I've been realizing that. Okay, let's look at it in the Bible. Let's look at let's pull a verse out of the Bible. Matthew six twenty two, Luke eleven thirty four. And it says So what do y'all think what this means right here? What, your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eyes are healthy, your whole body is also is full of light. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thy eye is single, thy whole body is full of light. Now, I want you all to pay attention how they change this verse. Because they say, when your eyes are healthy, this New International Version. Because these idiots over here in New International Version, they don't understand. This is why y'all got to look at these different Bibles. It's important. If y'all want to see the devil, pull up about ten different Bibles and look at how they translate it. And you will begin to see the devil. When you look at a verse like 1134, it says in King, I'm going to show you, the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thy eye is single, the whole body is full of light. But when thy eye is evil, thy body is also full of darkness. Now, notice right here it uses the singular eye. But right here in the New International Version, it's going to say your eyes are the lamp of the body. When your eyes are healthy, your whole body also is full of light. You know, this is going to lead a person to thinking about physical eyes. But it's not talking about that. It's talking about when the eye is single, your body is full of light. This is talking about the pineal gland. This is talking about the third eye. This is not talking about your, your two physical eyes. Let me ask you all a question. Do you see with your eye or do you see with your mind? Do you see with your eyes or do you see with your mind? What do you think you see with? you think you really see with your eyes? Nah, you see with your mind because you can focus on what picture you want to see, if it's the left or right. So obviously it's not And also your the eyes. optic nerve that is connected to the brain, if that gets damaged, you're going to experience blindness. All right. You interpret things with the mind. The mind is what sees and interprets everything for you. When you close both your eyes, you can still see something in your mind's eye. Close both of your eyes right now and visualize an image. What is it that is seeing the image if your eyes are closed? I can close my, I got my eyes right closed right now, and I'm picturing a big booty girl. And it's like, hey, <laughs> you know, I see her. <laughs> Yeah. You know, so what is what is what is, what are you seeing that with? If your eyes are closed, it's the mind's eye. So sometimes the eye, the vision before the eye will be blurry. 
When you start, anybody will tell you this, when you start to purify your body, your thoughts become clearer. You begin to see clearly. You begin to see it. So my take on the pineal gland is get your health together. Right. And they have some, some some information out there on people who give in, uh, out what you need to take in your body to decalcify uh, to decalcify the penile gland because they're feeding you food to calcify your penile gland. That's what I was saying uh, earlier about the food. Let me pull this up for you. Calcification of the pineal gland. Pineal gland calcification can come from In order to truly decalcify your pineal gland, you will need to learn. Let me read all of this. The pineal gland may also be referred to as the third eye. This endocrine gland is located on the vertebrae at the center area at the bottom of the brain, just where the two hemispheres meet. The pineal gland is responsible for producing melatonin, a derivative, a derivative of serotonin that will provide seasonal functions and the wake-sleep schedule of the body. As you age, the pineal gland become, can become calcified causing uh, calcium phosphate to develop over the gland. Fortunately, there are ways to decalcify the gland and prevent calcium phosphate buildup in the future. Causes of pineal gland calcification. As noted above, calcification tends to become more severe with age, with many people experiencing symptoms of heavy calcification of the pineal gland by the time they are 17. This means that an MRI or other scan would show a large lump of calcium phosphate on the gland as well as other parts of the body. This calcification process is caused by constant exposure to substances like fluoride, which build up in the body over time, toothpaste, public water systems, hormones, food additives, Excess sugar and sweeteners in your diet or even regular exposure to cell phones has been linked to the phenomenon of calcifying the pineal gland. So, as you can see, sir, like I said earlier, the first thing I start on is my diet. All right. And notice he said by 17. They start doing it to you early because they know there's something about you. It ain't no accident they put in all this stuff in this food. They got a video right now, The Truth About Sugar, that they're talking about high fructose corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup yeah. is a damn poison, and they put it in every damn thing, even hamburger buns. Yeah, I appreciate that. I just really wanted to get it out like, for more people to know, because I know there's a lot of people listening, so... That's Appreciate very good. That. that was very good, my brother. That's very good. Start with your diet. I think everything begins with diet. People do not have enough. People do not have do not appreciate the importance of putting your health before everything. It is health, yeah. wealth, and happiness. Health, wealth, and happiness. Health, wealth, and happiness. Health precedes wealth. Thank you, my brother. Let me dip yep. over to Dallas, Texas real quick. Peace. Peace to the guy. Yeah, you know, and brother, I'm over here. You know, I got you. Uh, email me. We might can hook up with some. Um, what part of L.A. you in? You in L.A.? Yeah, I'm in San Fernando Valley. So, I mean, not too far from Orange. I know that's where y'all headquarters or that's where the address yeah. is. So. They're in San I'll Fernando, okay? Yeah. Okay, yeah, email me. We might I, I emailed you already, like actually. I emailed you already oh. probably either yesterday or two days ago. So, um yeah, I can okay. email again and leave my number and everything, though. Yeah, do that, you know, and I'll hit you up, okay? All right, appreciate it. All right, peace, peace, peace. All right, let's go to, let me go to Dip to Dallas, Texas real quick, 972-2558. As-salamu alaykum, brother. As-salamu <laughs> alaykum, brother. You said, man, I'm still in L.A., man. I haven't got back to Texas yet, but I'm on my way. Hey, oh, brother, it's a wonderful, yeah. wonderful show, man, and uh, I do appreciate it. I know the family appreciate it because you're right. It's it's not about chasing after this so-called dollar or these this paper chase. It's about self-improvement, which is the basis of community development. I know we heard that before. Self-improvement it is the basis of community development. 
And um, uh, I, I hear you talking about that uh, uh, incubus and uh, uh, the concubus. An uh, incubus and a succubus. A succubus, succubus. is a female, okay. and an right, incubus right. is a what you probably call an Isla, Islam jinn. That's right. It's a, it's a, you know, it's, it, you know, we always say there's no such thing as no good and evil. Good and evil. I mean, no, good, a, a bad or good or nothing. Like that. It, evil comes when it, it causes hurt, harm, or danger with someone. And when someone goes out, that calls that that's a devil, one who opposes the will of God and the spirit of God. Just finding as a guide and you know something that's that look at it's a guy whatever you use whatever person you use it could be a mother father it could be a book you know whatever it is that's a god to you or you can just some people just out myself i go with my instinct okay that's a god but if anything that goes against that will or that spirit of that god or your that person can be as a devil you must they can be incubus and as negative or or positive i look at it it becomes uh, detrimental when we don't control it, as you 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 just literally said, you know, controlling. And that, I got Solomon, David, David and Solomon. Solomon was given a ring to control demons. That six pointed star. That's what those that's what those symbols stand for. That pentagram is an a symbol that is used to contain an evil spirit. And that's why you, so what they would do in magical um, type process is before they invoked a demon, they'd have to create an atmosphere for that demon to exist in. And they would, and they would uh, have that, they would put a, fire, a pentagram on the ground and invoke that demon in that pentagram. And you were safe as long as you were on the outside of that pentagram and did not come into that atmosphere. And you could talk to that demon. That's what these these, right. these shapes these shapes these uh, all of these emblems and everything mean is they control spirits. Solomon well, is also always, giving Solomon controls spirits too. Right, right. That, that, I'm going to talk about that something I haven't really delved into, and it's very interesting. Even when it came to gin, but when I heard this incubus and the succubus, I said, "Well, that's the gin." And the messenger of uh, this uh, was sent to gin too, punished. For their influences, but the, the fact is that succubus works very well with the right person, and you manage that manage that relation relationship. You know, we have to. The first thing is know thyself. Once you know yourself, and you you say a person, yourself, uh, I my second wife, man, I was for nothing when it came to that. I, 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 you know, she was a booty person. But I I learned how to move. I Wait, brother, are you breaking up? You you breaking up real bad, man. I be hearing something you saying, and you break up, and I can't hear it. I'm having trouble hearing you. Can you got can okay. you move somewhere? Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. All right. Go ahead. As I was saying, it, it's it's knowing it's knowing that self. It's really being committed to knowing yourself and knowing. Uh, Meanwhile, like, make it for instance, knowing knowing your body. I asked my son, I said, maybe you know yourself. He told me, I like. So that's not yourself. I said, do you know how many beats your heart uh, beat? Did you know how fast the blood needs to go from your head to your toe, uh, uh, back to your head? How many seconds? You know, do you know uh, the stomach? The stomach is supposed to be the size of your fist. You know, do you know yourself? And if the stomach is supposed to be the size of your fist, so where am I going wrong? Having to eat every, you know, uh, eat in and out or, or more than three times a day, maybe once a day, but nibbling. You know, the stomach is supposed to be that small. So it's knowing yourself, and then if you have a sister or a brother, you know, really the sister, because really, I, I, I read that sex is really all about sisters, because when a brother goes to a sister, he's going to get served. I mean, a foot in her thighs, her breast, her body, she, she's built to serve. Just this being there, just laying there, she's going to serve. So to me, sex it was about it was about sex. It was about being a sister, but a brother, something about himself. No, that book, I, I have that book also, a title of uh, sexual healing or whatever thing with the dollars. You know? And it has some very, very good instructions and truth in knowing yourself. But the thing is that knowing that sister's mood, her mood, how the mood uh, is she's feeling this. He's in line with that. Yeah, you breaking about, up. You breaking up again. You're breaking up bad. 
Oh, okay. Well, as I'm, I'm probably in the bad. I'm over here about the air, by the airport. But like I said, the stuff on the building is really uh, in line with nature and the diet. They are able to really predict their mood uh, according to the sun, but they have to study one another. But it starts with uh, with the diet, with knowing themselves and knowing you know just the diet. It really helps in a relationship. And when they get into that that, that bedroom, just you know, it ain't just a one night stand. Let it start, you know, let it be a whole month before you really do it. You know, I mean, I mean, you, you got to know you're a woman. You just gotta, you just figure that for themselves. But go in there, like you said, as a scientist, not just feeling around in the dark like some child. You know, so there are there are, there are methods, there are ways. But the first starts with stuff because everybody's not built the same. You know, everybody, you know, some sisters have got short. You know, short breasts, some are thick, some are thin, some are tall, some are short, you know. And uh, she can get into this, this size thing, you know, because she can make you whatever size you need to be to please her. It's like a cucumber in a pickle jar, you know. As, as, long, as, that, as long as that cucumber stay in that juice, it's going to run me. It's going to get thick. But according yeah. to what's in that jar. But if you start digging up, this big my thing sister and think he don't do something, Man, come on, that's, that's confusion. And she got Bob, Jim, Tony, Richard, all up in her. Her, her womb is confused. She don't know uh, her womb is a muscle. And when it grabs, she, she don't know if it's Tom. It's, uh, he don't know the, the woman don't know if it's Tom, Dick, Harry. Don't know who it is. Cause it's confused. You know what I'm saying? So it's about going to knowing yourself, eating the right food first. Get in line with the nature, with the food, so your body can get in line, so you'll be able to prevent. What's going on with that I, relationship I between think, stuff? I think that food is so important, and I, I mean, it's everything that I've studied. Um, the diet is like is like the antecedents that you know. I mean, I mean, it precedes whatever it is that you're trying to do. It's like you got to be healthy. You got to be healthy, and it's like I, I mean that message. I can't even pound that message. It just goes into everything that you're trying. I like right now these men all having this. Um, what is kind of surgery? This prostate cancer. I mean, where is that coming from? You get prostate cancer. You know, you can't, is your erection not right? You know, people are attributing all this stuff to AIDS. This is not AIDS. This is this is toxins in the body. Your body starts becomes so toxic. Your body your your body starts not to operate the same way anymore. You got to get the toxins out. A lady I was with, this, she told me. She's a health a nutritionist, and she told me, she said, she said, you can tell a man's health by his erection. If his erection is mm-hmm. not standing up, hitting him in the chest, right. he's not he's got right. a lot of toxins in the body. He says, the more toxins you get in your body, the more your erection starts going all the way down until you become impotent. And that's what right, Dr. Right. Savy was saying. When he, he became impotent, the man told him, go listen to Dr. Savy. He is a Mexican. He told him what to do. He had impotency. He's talking about curious impotency. He said, stop eating. He stopped eating for like three months. Mm. Right. The erection came right. back full throttle. Well, uh, I don't know if you heard, uh, uh, maybe this was a while back, uh, but a question was put to uh, Dick Gregory a long time ago, and he talked about prostate cancer. And he said that the problem, one of the problems with prostate cancer is uh, it's just screwing too much. We try to go all night long, but we're doing all night wrong. You know what I'm saying? You know, after, after a man ejaculates naturally, the natural thing, he has to shut down for a certain amount of time. That's natural. So we're going to take a pee ball, we're going to do this and do that, and we, we force our body to go into that erection again. That's not natural. We talk about natural law. So he has to walk, I mean, that book that you spoke about, uh, which is a wonderful book, is uh, uh, The Tao of Sexual um, Healing or something like that. It tells you ways to stroke, how to do this, but you, man, it, it, you got to, even, even with breathing, it starts with just breathing. And uh, it, it, it tells you, you know, how to breathe, direct them things, how to tighten direct them. It's all I about told you, if, you, if you feel like you're about to orgasm, if you just start taking deep, do deep breathing, you'll see it start to, you know. But it still, a, it still is a when man when a man be battling when he be in bed with a woman, is he had that urge? He wants to feel that that orgasm is so addictive, that <laughs> orgasmic feeling. And you want to experience that, that it's kind of very difficult to suppress. That's why it's all a mental exercise, like your intention. When you go into the bedroom, a man that's a good lover is one whose mind is dead set on pleasing the woman. You know, you and, then when you, when, and then when you redirect that focus to yourself, then you can reach an orgasm for yourself. 
But if you get your right. focus off of yourself and on that woman right there, you want to you won't feel that need to <laughs> orgasm quickly. And That's what would true. happen with if you go and study some books like the Dial of Male Sexual Energy, it, I mean, it is a very good book. It gets in there and tells you all these different techniques. You in there thinking all these techniques you're gonna put on her ass. Or yes, the last thing that's on your mind. Are you trying to figure <laughs> yeah, even with that, you can't you can't like go in you can't like go in the bedroom with her with that book. You have to go in knowing that woman. You got to go in I mean, you know, bathe her, I mean massage her, I mean take care of her, comb, learn to comb her hair. Do something, you know, uh massage her to take too. care of her, man. Try her out, man. Still her, man. Take I mean she, well sex starts well before you ever get into the bedroom. I mean that's there what you makes go. it. You know, when you get older, you learn to appreciate. You know, when you're young, you know, you be hearing, I be listening to these cats, I'm going to beat it up. I'm going to beat it up. I'm not listening. That's got to be a beginner that thinks like that, you know, even talk like that. I'm like, no, nah, bro. I say, no, nah, when you become a technician, when you got your pull out your damn charts, and you didn't analyze yeah. this shit, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you know techniques, you ain't thinking about solely. That that might be one speed that you might hit, but damn, you're going to hit, you know, take it through all through down from first to fifth gear. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. all of them. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, I just listen to that, and it just kind of thing. I'm going to beat it up. Like, ah, you I'm know, I don't think I'd like to hit Go something ahead. that's in the Quran. In the Quran, it says, excuse me, brother, my part, is, uh, it says that, a man, a man can go on his woman as he please. And she's as tilt as she go on as his please. And I hear brothers right. say that just from Muslim brothers, but, but look yeah, at this man. A tilt, a tilt, a tilt is dealing with property, uh, agriculture. No, a real farmer. No, he's just not gonna cut into that property without knowing the time and what must be done. He's not gonna start cutting into that property if the if the weather is bad. You know, what are you trying to sow? You know, he wants to sow some corn. At a certain time, you have to, as a reaping and as a harvest time. So, if he, so it means going to her uh, with some knowledge. And it, it also, in the next verse, it says, it's best you put something before you do that. Do something. So how do you do before you do that? So I'm going to tell you what I noticed. I, what I noticed about my three children, they all reflect the mental condition that I had when I, uh, when they were, you know, brought into the world, when I had, you know, when they were conceived. You know, it's like if I, like, you know, when my youngest daughter was conceived, I was in some old hustling stuff. And she seemed to be reflecting the personality like a hustler. You know, my, when my, uh, you know, my that was my youngest. My oldest daughter, I was reading a lot of damn books. And she's a damn brain. You know what I'm saying? It's right. like, you know, I'm, I'm serious, you know. Pay attention to that stuff. Because, you know, right. you're not approaching the creative process. You are creating something. And right. I went through a book called The, uh, uh, science of love, and it gets in all that. I was surprised to actually even see that in there, because if you just really pay attention and you start looking at some things, okay, what type of spirit are you about to bring into the world? And it's based on right. your own mental condition. you got to make sure right. conditions right. are correct and approach the creation, because, you know, we do things just indiscriminately. That's all. You know, we've been taught to do that. We don't approach, we don't approach nothing scientifically. It's just, everything is just indiscriminate. I'm going to bust one. Well, I just feel like doing it. Well, that's, <laughs> you know, or whatever. I like her. She got a big ass and big titties. You know, it's like we don't never look at anything scientifically and right. approach it from that. Well, what's a blood type? What's a mental state like? You know, what's you a history go. like? You know, right. what are all these things? You know, what's going on with her? You know, I know she looked good. Mm -hmm. That don't mean shit, you know. Yeah. You know, I got to look at her. What's going on? Whoa, whoa, Is this somebody whoa. I want to be the mother of my children? But, uh, right. uh, yes, she's a nice person. Okay, but what else has she got going for? You know, it's, right. she got right. a strong will. It's how's a mindset. You know, all these different right. things we should go into when we've been considering if you want to have strong children and have a strong mate. And right. you know, women, they instinctively look at that with us. They want the they want the most healthiest and strongest male. That's the, and that's that way in all of the animal kingdom. Right, you know? in the animal kingdom. I can't say that for too much while. I supposed to look at your shoes and look at your, your top, go down back to your shoes. And, okay, and, let, I me, mean, come okay on, let me talk about that. Let me talk about that. <laughs> is it a woman is looking at your ability, uh, your ability to provide? You are a provider and a protector. And I think she tells mm -hmm. you on both those things. Is your ass a wimp? All right. And can you provide for a family? Why would I start mm -hmm. sitting out some babies for you that you can't take care of? If you can't take well, care play, of yourself. Well, the, the players got shoes, and they got cars, too. 
And he's going to lose money. I do think the shoes and the cars today is like that's very superficial because most men know that's what you're looking for, and a man can go buy right. and all his money on shoes and a nice car and not have a pot to piss in because he's just doing it just to get some pussy. All right, so right. that's right there. The intelligent woman, I think, will delve deeper than just looking at your shoes and your car. You know, right. you know, you got a nice car and some nice too. You could have a car you ain't made a damn car no a damn payment on. All you did is pay the damn. Uh, down payment on it. Ain't that made another payment in two years. Hide from the repo right. man. And and that would be the surface of it. But but you went back into the spur. I mean, nothing. I didn't, you know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, I, matter of fact, I had this conversation with my son just uh, Saturday, and I was just going in, and we was really just. I guess he was kind of uh, trying to ace up on me. Well, why are we have such a rough time when we, when I was a little boy? And I I explained to him. I said, well, when uh, when you came about, I was at a certain stage. And sperm is nothing but information. That's all this DNA is information. And if I hadn't cleaned up my life, cleaned up my thinking, cleaned up my habits, then I just put the wrong information in your mom and gave gave life to it. Now, when you came, I was looking at old ways, and I didn't, I, I, I want no association. So we kind of like, you know, didn't get along, you know, until he saw, until he began to grow out and see me do better than he did better as a, as a father son do. But I let him know that you must clean up your life. Whatever you don't want, you give birth to, don't put it aside in a woman because she's just an incubator. She's an incubator. Whatever you put in her, she's going to incubate it and give life. That's right. That's what it is. It's just That's an incubator. Right. And another, thing is, is, a, a, another thing, too, though, you have to be careful about is when a woman is in our pregnancy, you, you have to, a woman has to be in a very, very nice uh, environment uh, during that nine months because that child does not have a conscious mind, but the child has a subconscious mind. And as such, that subconscious mind can hear things, and that, all that will be incorporated into the child as well. So you can right. you can put things into your child or speak things into your child while you're, you should speak to your child, speak to that uh, uh, um, uh, your wife uh, when she's pregnant, speak to that child through her stomach. The child hears all of that. You right. got to your woman very with with kid gloves. You can't be while she's pregnant calling her a bitch and calling out her name and doing all this kind of stuff right here. That's having an adverse effect. If you're really thinking about it, if you're really a conscious individual, as I look at men, and you're really c- concerned about things, you have to know the sciences. You have to know that hey, there's a cause and effect associated with all everything that you do. So if you that's have right. a woman that's pregnant right here and she's not in, in an environment that's conducive to producing healthy uh, children or whatever, you're going to get exactly what you put into it. Right, you don't need right. to be in no environment that's volatile or that is uncomfortable or anything like that. Women who are pregnant need to be in comfortable environments. Right, right. Well, big man, peace and love, man. I, I, appreciate, I appreciate the time to chime in. All right, brother. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yes, All right. Always. All right. Thank you. All right.